slow today. And welcome <laughs> to an episode of our 72 I... Pin Connector Podcast. The, the show, the game, the movie, the show. The show. And on the soundtrack to the movie, to the... To the play. To the game. Play to, to the, the book. Yeah. 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 And our authors tonight are Tom Ernest Webster. Good evening. Adam Stephen Jordan. What are you doing? I don't know. I was trying to think of another author, <laughs> no. but after I, after I started, <laughs> I just you blanked. Hit, you hit Ernest Hemingway, and then you just gave up. I gave up. <laughs> because the... <laughs> souls the best, the Rand best. Invader. It's like... No, no, right. you can't put Ayn Rand on Souls. Why not? He, because he he's more of a Dickens. I mean, look at look at the guy. He's definitely got the <laughs> Charles Dickens esque look about him. I could see him writing like right. twenty thousand words when six could do. Are you saying he's <laughs> long winded, <laughs> or are you just Dude, looking in a mirror? I'm just you know, not Ayn Rand. Come yeah, on, that's yeah. an insult. Oh, okay. gotta do what you gotta do to hit those word counts. I don't know. Alice Shrugged is what like two million pages. It, it was a fucking Bible. <laughs> yeah. It was the size of the fucking Bible. <laughs> I, I actually did like the book. Definitely long-winded. Read it. Definitely long-winded, but I liked it. So, anyway. Yeah. Um, if yeah. you're with us, this means that, hey, you've realized that we are monthly. We or put- you didn't realize it, and somehow this showed up in your feed. Although that's... Probably not ever going to happen because we're never going to catch up on our backlog of edits to do. We're getting there. Uh, we, we, got, we got two it's out this along. week. We, we didn't get them out this week. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> well, well, we'll have some out here soon. <laughs> in, in a big batch of them. Yeah. So, anyway. Yes. Sweet monthly. Longer cast, possibly. Who knows? But we're here. So. We are here. Guys, what you been up to for the last month? How's it been going? Well, I uh, I found a good Indian carryout place near me. Ooh. Um, yeah. Uh, I got the chicken korma. It wasn't as sweet as I was used to, and it didn't actually have, like, the, the shaved nuts or the raisins in it, which I, I really like mm. in a chicken korma. Uh, but it was, it was good. It was good. I've got no complaints. It wasn't too pricey, and uh, they were fast. I had food. <laughs> really? Did you? Yeah. Mm, I, I ate more. it, and it gave me energy. Them? Do you have a month's worth of food? Some would say, but then to most, that's like a month and a half at least. <laughs> I had ham chips. Ham chips? Yep. They what? are ham they're chip? English potato chips flavored with Iberico ham. It tastes like you're eating ham. So hold on. They that do ham flavored. Disgusting. Canada does ketchup flavored. Yeah. What other weird flavors are we missing here? Well, I mean, every chip does a taco flavor. No, no, no. I mean, like, yeah. if if England has, like, their own, this is a potato chip that's here that other places don't make. Oh. Canada makes ketchup flavor potato chips. Myself, I'm sure Japan kid, has, like, green tea chips or something. Yeah, yeah. Th- that's what I'm saying. Like, well, I mean, there's also Marmite chips, which are kind of, you know, like, Australian and kind of British at the same time. Marmite? Yeah, like, uh, yeast extract stuff. It wasn't it good. Toast? It wasn't good. I I tried that one. It it wasn't good. We Weird. got a big batch of English potato chips. I also had roast chicken chips, um, which were okay. Amazingly enough, they are vegan. <laughs> well, <laughs> there, it's a potato chip, right? Yeah, but I was thinking, you know, roast chicken flavor. Maybe there's a chicken somewhere in the process, like a chicken sneezed on a couple potato chips or something. But no, no, just straight so up potato chips. Wants to- or, yeah. or they're doing the brilliant thing that most people probably are doing. And let's just make it seem this way and stamp it. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> Either way. I, I had Nashville style hot chicken chips. Nice. Hot chicken the chips. Nashville, Nashville hot chicken. Oh, yo. The, the type of food. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. Chips. They, I'll be honest, they weren't very good, but they were free, so... <laughs> It was fine. Yeah. Can't really complain. There was one of those hot chicken joints in uh, Columbus right by where I was working. And oh, we really? would get Did that every once it? in a while. Oh, God, it's good. It's so what is good. It? It's, I don't know what that is. It's just like it's... a fried chicken, but the seasonings that they use on it. It's Why is got... it called chip? Oh, here... No, no. It was, a, it was a bag of chips flavored like Nashville hot chicken. Oh. Yeah. Flavoring. No, but Nashville hot chicken is like... Uh, okay. 
it's regular fried chicken and then they put a sauce on top of it that's basically a shit ton of cayenne pepper and melted lard and butter and that's Ooh, like good super it. good <laughs> super good totally and into then, this so it's funny yeah, one of my coworkers. Um, being our first time going there, of course, he's like, yeah, I'll, I'll go with hot. And I'm like, man, I, I know my lesson. I've learned it a long time ago. I'll go middle of the road to start with. Yep. So he took one bite and like, he started sweating. Yeah. It was like, yep. He you literally caught in fire. <laughs> literally. Literally. I, I, I tried it once. I've had it once. And there's a place pretty close to me called, uh, Mike's Nashville hot. And they have different spice levels you can get like that, um, but they call them like Sissy. Midwestern, Midwestern mild, and like Texas spicy, and then Nashville hot is the top one. And I was like, well, the place is called Nashville hot. I can't really just order this and not get it Nashville hot. So I did. Oh and no, yeah, it was, oh, dude, it was did you pretty, chug? It was painful. They don't, they don't, uh, they don't mess around. Did you chug a gallon of milk? Uh, no, um, no, but I did sweat a lot. Wow. It's very sweaty. We always have a joke <laughs> at work. Um, whenever we would get like Indian food or something and be spicy, we would ask, is this spicy, spicy, or is this white guy spicy? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I was actually, I was pleasantly yeah. surprised with this, uh, this Indian place. I got the medium because I'm not, a, I'm not insane. Uh, and <laughs> it, it had a little bit of kick to it. It wasn't like enough that I was like, oh, wow, this is spicy. But it was, it was a, a very pleasing amount of spice. And my wife got, you know, very low spice and it had no spice. It was really good. Man, you just, you you just lowered like a bit food, there. Right? I love spicy food. Yeah. You guys have got to eat New Mexican food. then. <laughs> You've yeah, got to try so it. I'm, it's I want all to. based on chili and like just yes, the please. best, best of spices. So you My, should like was, make us something was... and ship it. <laughs> yes, yeah. you can. Don't don't I like could. put it in a refrigerated box. Just like literally stuff just whatever you're eating in tonight envelope. in an envelope <laughs> yeah. and send it. Priority <laughs> mail that like, shit. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like a soggy dripping envelope. <laughs> I'm okay it's with this. It's gonna just get confiscated hey, before it gets there. It's not the worst envelope I've ever received. Oh. Do we want to oh. open this bag of worms? Um, yeah. Well, the worst envelope I ever received had uh, had three letters on it. It said I and R and S, and I was like, oh, fuck. Ooh, and then I realized yeah. I, I put a wrong number in a form, and they're like, hey, can we have $5,000? And I was like, what? And so I called them, <laughs> and they said, oh, honey... You have to fill out this form now because you messed up your taxes. I was like, oh, shit. Isn't right. it amazing that some people can duck the IRS for a decade? Yeah. And then yeah. you forget you to pay your school tax number. once yep. or something. <laughs> Bam. Yeah. You you miss. I, I, literally, I honestly think it was like the local school's tax or, or something stupid mm. like that to put on a form. And they're just like, yeah, you're going to. You're going to just fork over five grand right now. We'll break your kneecaps. We're the IRS. We don't give a shit. <laughs> they can. They will. <laughs> yeah. They've done worse to better people. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. But anyway. Lessons of life. Yeah. Don't anyway, work with the IRS. Soggy envelopes. Totally okay with it. Ship away. All right. We'll yes. send. On the way. It's already gone. <clears throat> already gone? All right. Yeah. Well, in that case, Perfect. hey, Tom, way by the door. All right. We don't need you to the show. Yeah. Okay. Just got our food. All right. All right. <laughs> Bring it in. Ah, anyway. So, with that said, I think we all played a little bit of games this week. Month. Month. Damn, it's going to take a while to get used to. Yeah. Oh, man. Mm, yeah. I played right. some this week, though, too. Yes. So, we, we and, all... And also over the month. I, well, I'm going to say most of us played Deceit, which is kind of like yes. first-person shooter werewolf uh, and free-to-play. Yeah. I think that's a recent change. Deceit was free cool. to play. Yeah. yeah. Our good friend Dave recommended this to us, and we ended up finally downloading it and playing it one night. It was uh, it was solid. I enjoyed yeah. it. It was it was a good time with friends. It's really cool. Yeah, you don't. It's it's a first person shooter, but you don't play it for the shooting. The shooting mechanics no. were awful. Uh, no, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna say they awful. weren't that bad. They they weren't the point of the game. They were there and built well enough to get by. But yes. that's it. That said, they were awful. They yeah. don't. They could be though. <laughs> I'm not saying it hurt the game. Yeah. I I know yeah. I've played. I've played games with worse shooting mechanics that were like 
shooting games. <laughs> so yeah. I didn't think it was that bad, but I mean, it's not the worst I've played, but so it's if, really cool. If no one has played Werewolf out there, it works exactly the same as Werewolf, or, or very similar to it, where you've got a group of, what, six people? Yeah, six and people. Uh, two of them will be infected. They will have the ability, after consuming blood bags, um, to turn into creepy monsters and kill the other players. And everyone else mm -hmm. is innocent. Um, and then you've got one person who's like an investigator and they can... Well, not in this. This, I think it's just... I thought there was an investigator in this. No, there's not no. an investigator. Okay. You, you pretty much you have... There's different infected. gadgets you can get. <clears throat> yes. Oh, that was it then. And... That was it. But in general, werewolf, big, no blood, no anything. Werewolf, you have two infecteds, four standards, and everyone thinks everyone is standard to start. Yep. And over the course of the game, the infected kill off the standard and the standard try to vote out the infected. Yeah, mm -hmm. that that is it in a nutshell. And then this game adds some mechanics of its own, like Tom is alluding to. The infected will transition into these creepy fast monsters if they mm -hmm. consume enough of these blood bags that are randomly around the map. So it's really so. There's cool. a lot of yeah, and that gives the opportunity for people to immediately start suspecting people. Like, I don't know, I saw Jim over there awful close to that blood bag for a while, or. Hey, this blood bag's empty, and I just saw what's his face leave this room. I think he might be the one that's infected. And, and of then you can all you can all lights, talk, talk over the chat. The lights will randomly go out. So I was the infected once, and somebody was following me around. I was like, "Oh yeah, we're gonna we're gonna follow this guy around. I bet it's this guy." And no one knew I was the infected because I, I played my part pretty well. And then the lights went off, and I ran. I saw my opportunity. I was like, "Okay." Got to get out of eyesight. Got to consume three blood bags. I've got to kill Urk. And it worked. <laughs> it did. It worked. It was uh, It was a good old time. Urk got played. I yeah. got played. <laughs> yeah. Well, I if you like lying to your friends, this is a great game for you. Yeah. I think it was once it was Adam. Where we're just like, we think it's Adam. He's like, no, nah, no, nah, man. I think it's Adam. It's like, no, nah, no, nah, it's not. And then he fucking wins because it was him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if, if, you do not, if you do not catch the infected... Uh, or escape by the end of the game. Like if you if you get killed, um, you lose. Yeah, there's essentially three rounds, and the non-infected are trying to get out. So yeah. they either get out or they kill the infected. Yep. Mm -hmm. And the voting mechanic in this was actually kind of cool. It's not like uh, let's leave the game, go to a menu, select this person, and vote. Right. Yeah. It is this person's down. Shoot them if you think they're bad. Yeah. And after everyone shoots them. The vote is had, and the person is eliminated. Yep. And then it tells you, hey, this person was infected. Or it says, hey, this person was innocent. You just which, killed your buddy. Yeah, which we did a couple times. That, uh, da, that's da, never a good da. feeling. But what's frustrating is when you know <laughs> someone's infected, because you watch them pick up a blood bag, they're down to be voted. And the down mechanic also works like a typical game. They're down. Your teammates can help you up. So two people would voted to eliminate this person. The third person comes over and just resurrects them. Yep. It's like, no. It's like, you... no, <laughs> this is the person. Little did they know that person that kept resing the other one was another infected. Yeah. Oh, well, that seems pretty obvious, right? I, I guess it, it should well, be. It, it should, should be, but you also might think they're just ignoring voice comms. Yeah. Oh. Uh, but man. they weren't. <laughs> voice so comms should be necessary. There's a cool out of the game. So that, that game by itself... I mean, yeah, it, it does get dull after a while, but it's fun. And then when you get out of it, there's now a leveling mechanic where, oh, you run a little faster. Or, oh, you uh, do a little more damage as the infected at night. And you have this tree of progressions that you work your way up. It was, it was interesting. I don't think it's enough to break the game. I, I do have mm -hmm. to say, if this wasn't free to play, I would have never picked it up. Uh, even even at like a five dollar game, there's there's no way I, I would have bought this. It's not something I would have picked up, but now playing it, if other people were playing it and I had to spend five dollars, I I might. Yeah, like if it was a party yeah. game, like if it was a postcast game or something, and we're all gonna get on and play deceit. Yeah, I guess I'd spend five bucks then, but not unprompted. Yeah, yeah. But it's, it's good. It's a lot of fun. It's the perfect like. Oh, what do you guys want to play tonight? I don't know. Hey, you guys want to pick up deceit? Yeah, sure. You know, it's not one of those where I'm at work like, oh, I can't wait to get home so I can play more Deceit. But yeah, yeah, it's it's definitely a lot of fun once you get a group together. And especially if you could get a group of like all six people, that would be great. It fills the role for me 
that uh, tabletop simulator does too, where you're just oh. sitting around and just chilling with some guys in Discord. Like, you know what? Let's do some tabletop. And we actually did that this month. Um, D Laz, Dobby, and uh, Hugh. Uh, we all went and uh, was playing tabletop for there Hugh for what? about a week straight. Hugh, Hugh G. G. <laughs> Hugh G. What? Mr. Rection. G. Rection. <laughs> you, you just had to work it out there, didn't you? Uh, yep. I'm sorry. I'm five years old. <laughs> but uh, yeah, we was doing some tabletop simulator. Um, I've never played it before that. And holy shit, it's amazing. You just literally go to the Steam Workshop. You subscribe to games that you know, actual board games. And bam, you got them in the game. You just load everyone up and you're playing oh, the real games. Nice. So yeah, like pretty, pretty cool. We were doing code names. It's a fun. Oh, I love code names. Fun game we was playing in there, and of course, you know, once the other team wins, the table flip button gets spammed and everything goes flying up. <laughs> yep. Yeah. I was about to ask about the table flip button. So it's they understand what it does. So they have a mechanic where the the host can just hit previous thing and it goes back a step, and okay. you can go back another step. Or if someone's being a douche and constantly flipping the table, he can just say, hey, this person can't flip tables anymore. Hmm. Nice. I don't know if I like that mechanic. Because you're a douche. <laughs> I am. You're, you're that you douche. Would, yeah. I'm the guy that would always get table flip timed out. But we were playing Pandemic. And have you guys ever played Pandemic before? Mm -mm. Um, yeah, not the board uh, game. Was... Yeah, the board game's different than the, um, than the video game. The video game, right. you are the disease trying to spread. Yeah. The board game... You're the people trying to stop the spread. Oh, interesting. And it's really hard. Huh. Think it's like co-op, right? Yes, absolutely co-op. And we didn't do it. We got close, but we didn't do it. Hmm. Scott said he's played the game like three or four times and they've never beat it. Nice. Wow. But yeah, you guys should all get tabletop. We should do that sometime. I'm good with that. We and, should do that. We um, should definitely do that. How much, we how can, much is it on Steam? Um, $20. Pick, pick it up on sale. That's always yeah. on Steam sales. Yeah, always. Yeah, it's on sale okay. a lot. And uh, you the... can, they've got modules for uh, Pathfinder and other like tabletop mm -hmm. RPGs. So if yeah. you wanted to get character sheets and dice and actually have like a 3D dungeon that your party is crawling through with a dungeon master, they've got all that. Well, oh, yeah. Adam, you remember Hero Escape, that uh, tabletop game I used to play a lot? Oh, yeah, yeah. They have that the with the hex pieces. 12 hour grueling nightmare <laughs> of a twilight tabletop Imperium? game it's a pvp um, let's just select game. our characters for an hour and a half instead of well, playing and then we can start playing when you have people that don't know what any of the characters are and you've bought so many that you have like 200 characters for people to choose through not to mention there's like so, 10 people so it's, playing it's tabletop yeah. dota that's actually not a bad idea but no leveling right. no leveling and each person has like five units okay yeah it's really fun tabletop dota unless you're adam and then you think hey these guys have no life they're spending 12 hours rolling fucking dice <laughs> but he was with us rolling them dice just uh, keep rolling I... rolling 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 oh god yeah. <laughs> i picked up uh i picked up two new vr games um so i got raw data which has been famous slash infamous in my own little VR bubble for being that one fucking VR game that was too goddamn expensive. It's always been forty dollars, and uh, oh. it, yeah, at early access it was always forty dollars. So early like, access, yeah. So I was like, "What That's the rough. fuck?" Well, uh, let me let me preface Especially that because most VR games are like tech demos. Yeah, well, exactly. and most tech most VR games still are in early access. That's true. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's true. Um, so I. I really didn't want to buy this game, but it came out of early access. It has consistently gotten great reviews, um, and it went on sale for $37. So I picked it up. Um, yeah, 40 too much. 37 <laughs> Jump all over that yeah, shit. Yeah, exactly, exactly. I thought... Well, 37 99 or 36 99 uh, I think 36 99 you're okay. making yourself feel better. It was probably thirty seven yeah. ninety nine. Yeah, probably. Um, <laughs> it was four percent off. <laughs> but it's it's a shit ton of fun. It feels like a fully realized VR game. It's not 
like super lengthy or anything, but it does have enough character progression. It's got four different characters. You're consistently unlocking new abilities. Uh, you've got a campaign with an absolutely forget forgettable story that amounts to big corporations are evil. Ha! Go take them down. They're um, doing stuff with your data. Yeah, basically. That's, that's literally the whole story. Um, but what's cool is you get a sword that you can chuck like a boomerang, like a th uh, Thor throwing his hammer, and then call Ooh. it back and slice through people. And it's so much fun. You get telekinesis. You can chuck these robots around the room. There are scary parts with, like, zombie half-robots that fly towards your face. Yeah, there's uh, a guy with a bow and arrow, two people with guns, and then a person with a sword. Uh, you get a bunch of different abilities. You can co-op literally everything. Um, and uh, you can uh, do PvP, which is pretty ridiculous. I didn't do the PvP. The standard mm -hmm. mode was fun. Um it's a set i don't want to yeah it's, it's kind of set piece um where yeah um it's a wave they, shooter it's a vr wave shooter yeah i was gonna say i i compare it to like the area 51 kind of things yeah only instead of being on a cart you can move around yeah so uh the pvp is super fun um it is uh I was going up against another person with a sword and we were literally ninja battling around an arena and it is just a good time. Um, I kept getting killed because I was playing it like a video game. Uh, and you don't play VR like you play a video game. You play VR like you play real life. So as soon as I started <laughs> dropping to my knees, like doing limbo and slicing upwards at the people after I dashed towards them, I started killing them. Uh, which was really fucking cheap, but it worked until one guy caught on and started uh, like telekinesis throwing me. It's a good time. So... I've always been weird with VR in games where force feedback feels necessary. It like does. When you're sword dueling someone, if I hit your sword and I keep going, I'm going to fall. Yeah. Like I'm expecting to feel that weight and it's not there. Raw data has made me want force feedback in VR in a way I didn't think possible. Um, even even more so than trying to stand up by like holding onto a virtual table and falling on your face, which I do literally every time <laughs> I play VR. Like I'm, I'm picking up like ammo and shit off the ground and my gun, and I'll go to like put my hand on a table or a shelf or a wall or something. And I'll just be like, oh oh, that's not real. Okay, I'm on the ground now. Again. Let's try that again. <laughs> um, Have this... you ever done VR souls? I know I've never has. done VR. It's an experience. It's definitely worth checking out if you can find somebody that has one. Yeah. Or, yeah. Or whatever. It's a cool it sounds experience. Sounds so cool. Yeah. Because right now it's just, it's mostly just an experience, right? Like most games aren't really, like you said, they're not, they're like tech demos slash early access sort a of. A lot of them are, but some of them are really fun to play over. And over. There are some really good ones. Fun like okay. Duck Season. I really. <clears throat> Yes, I want to play that. So I also picked up Duck Season, uh, which is like they initially try to sell it as, oh, look, it's the 80s. It's it's VR Duck Hunt. Isn't this neat? That is not how they sold it. And, and, then, and then they're like, they're like, well, <laughs> it might not be 80s Duck Hunt. There might be something creepy going on, something nefarious, something. Oh, what the fuck is that? It's a Five Night at Freddy's dog. What the shit? So this dog It's unnerving Like you know the feeling when You have like FMV actors over top of set Like stationary backgrounds Like that yeah. weird kind mm -hmm. of uncanny feeling This like, dog When I'm watching Conquer Red Alert 2 Yeah, that yeah. Yes I'm watching this uh, this trailer, and this dog just starts waving at you and walks and it's, Strafing it's not, sideways It's not like a dog It is a man in a dog outfit a Clear really as day. fucked up dog outfit. And it, it's got this oh. uncanny feeling where it just kind of makes you get shivers down your spine. Oh, what the fuck? Yeah, it's it's <laughs> fucked. This game has like seven different endings. Uh, the shooting mechanics are fun. Um, it, it is how you would build a modern version of Duck Hunt. Uh, and the things they do with the tech are really, really interesting. Uh, I've never been in a VR dream sequence. And this one has one, and it is fucking unsettling. Really fucking unsettling. <laughs> Nothing like gets in your face, but it's 
it's unnerving. It's a, a really excellent VR game. I would say raw data, if you're bored, if you want something added to your VR library, if you don't mind throwing away 40 bucks, get raw data. But Duck Hunt is a must-have. It's it's by the same studio that brought you Hover Junkers. Which uh, is the best game uh, on VR that is no longer a good game. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it is, it is. <laughs> the community died. VR has like oh. six people that that have a vibe. Um, and when those six people decide, hey, we're not going to play Hover Junkers anymore because we're bored, um, the game dies. Right. Okay. But that was my number one experience in VR ever oh, it's was so playing Hover good. Junkers. So good. I, I never even thought like even when purchasing the vibe i never thought hmm i'm gonna duck behind this cover because literally you have to duck behind cover and blind fire at your opponents to hit anything without dying because other people are physically shooting at you while you keep your one hand on the the joystick of your hovercraft so you're steering your hovercraft around yeah. while you're <laughs> ducking shooting over it oh my god it is so much fun i'm but, gonna go back and play it but that said all those nice full-scale games and everything out there what is the best game to play still currently? Um, it honestly it depends on my mood. Um, I would say Rec H3, Room. H3 VR. Rec Room. Rec Room by far Rec is Room. still the best experience possible. I love Rec Room. I do, but I spend way more time in hot dogs, horseshoes, and hand grenades. Way more time. It's not a game. It's not a game. It's a sandbox. <laughs> it's a VR sandbox filled with guns and explosives and cool physics objects that I can just fuck around with. And it's so much fun. But you see, they, I g Yes, Adam? Are they still updating Space Pirate Trainer? Because that one was a lot of fun. They are. They are. Uh, not like at the clip that they were when the Vive first came out, uh, but they do have different modes. They've got some new weaponry. Um, it's still a thing. And that is probably possibly my favorite paid for game is Space I Pirate like Trainer. Um, for those of you who don't know what that is, you get uh, shields that you store on your back and you get guns. And you can possibly choose the different style of shooting everything on the guns, but your you shield changes now too. Sweet. Yeah. So well, you you can either have the shield, which blocks the lasers and can like force push robots away from you, and there's swarms of robots all around you trying to kill you. Um, when they shoot, you matrix dodge. Yeah. Uh, but uh, you can now get uh, essentially like um, a spiked baton that you can use to uh, tractor beam bots oh, nice. towards you. So you so, can you can take one and tractor beam them and play baseball. So. How the so it'll make more sense because I can tell souls like what the fuck. Um, you're on top of a skyscraper <laughs> on the roof, and these drones keep popping up from below and just keep raising up in waves to attack you. So you have like this pistol with different modes of fire and shields, and when bullet when lasers get close to you, it goes to bullet time. So you start matrixing around, which is really fun. Yeah, that sounds super fun. Super, super, super good game. It's, it's a good time. But yeah, um, I... Oh, I also picked up the Talus Principle of VR, and I put like six minutes oh, into it. Yes. Oh, six man. minutes? Yeah. Need more time that's a, that. That's a really good game. It that's seems a game. like a really good game, but I've got, I've got too many games. I'm going to get into other I games know. I've played, and I don't want to dominate all the time, but I'm going to oh. get into other games I've played after one of you guys goes. Well, I was just going to try to keep it going like, you know, conversation like it was. What? No. Um, Why would like, we do like that? A, Why would I talk like about that like time... Show? Me and Dave played Dota 2, and that was a good time. Oh, no. <laughs> what I was going to say is like, hey, do you guys actually get to play any of the new war mode? No. no. I did. Yeah. I got to play it. I got to play it, too. Uh. It was really nice because this war mode... Okay, I, I'm... Okay, back room conversation right now. Was the last war mode after our last podcast? Have we talked about war mode at all on the podcast I don't before? think so. Oh man, I don't remember. I uh, actually, I think was there was a, a new, there was a news item. Okay, so either way, yeah. Um, war mode is deathmatch in PUBG with some fancy shit. This one, what you only spawned with crate items, hmm. was and level awesome. three gear too. On top yes. of that, and didn't they switch the team sizes around? Isn't it? Yes. Yeah. Ten, they ten did. teams of five. Okay. I'm not sure if I liked that change that much. I, I did. Liked yeah, you didn't like it either? No, it felt like there was too much going on. Like, you would die yeah. constantly. Where previously, yeah. you would see your team. You're like, I'm going to kind of drop by my team. That will give me a mm -hmm. couple seconds to get my bearings. Yeah. Here it's like, fuck no, man. Jump straight to the fire. Yeah, <laughs> it, it, it was just constantly getting flanked by other people. And it was it was 
too too many teams. I think it, would, it was better because the first time it was five teams of ten, and this time it was ten teams of five. So it was just the chaos wasn't as as balanced. I don't even know if that's the right way to say it. It's just I like the old way. It wasn't pure chaos before. There was actually still some some time to get your yeah. boots on the ground and think. Yeah. This was you're dropping in, start looking because someone's going to shoot you, and it didn't help Shit. that half the players had an AWM. Oh my god! Yeah. I, it was I, so much different with that. I like the fact that they're experience they are, they are experimenting with the war mode though, because I would like to see that added in permanently. Yeah, just because. Same. Yes. I had a lot of fun with the first Honestly, the first round of war mode. War uh, mode, way more fun than I have. Huh? I'll, I'll go ahead and say it. You're saying what I'm thinking. What? Just continue. Your I don't sound. know. You're going to say that you just, like war mode more than the standard mode. I do. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, same. Yeah. Agreed. <laughs> so that's why I play PUBG Mobile in arcade mode, which is kind of the same thing. It's a very limited circle. You jump with 25 humans. There are no bots that I can tell. Um, you don't drop with gear, uh, although they do increase the spawn rate of gear everywhere. That's so what I love. Yeah, it's it's interesting. Um, PUBG Mobile isn't bad at all. Probably because it's not made by Blue Hole. Well, it's yeah. Tencent did it, didn't they? Yeah, mm -hmm. it's it's not the same game. You can tell it is not the same game. Uh, it is made to be a mobile game. Uh, it is made to work well, you with your money. It has to be. It has to be a made to make, be a mobile game. There's no, no, no way I, they're getting OG in, PUBG in, on a fucking in, in phone. In negative ways. In negative <laughs> ways, right? So it's like, oh, hey, here's oh, this cool thing that PUBG did. Except mobile PUBG does it, like, shittier in a way. And also, you're going to get spammed to go buy loot boxes. Ah. Uh, so What are the loot boxes? Just, like, cosmetics? Yeah. Uh, except It's not pay win, right? No, no, God no. Okay. Um, it, but here's here's the thing about PUBG Mobile is uh, your your character will spawn with literally nothing. When you create a new character in PUBG Mobile, you don't have shirts, shoes, pants, nothing. You are yeah. underwear man. You are John Doe. I have I have been playing this on and off for the past month or two, and I still don't have pants. Do you still get ba <laughs> Do you get battle Who points still? Them? Yeah. Okay. I have got like. 8,000 battle points and I still don't have pants and you you can't just like go buy crates that's not the way it works mm. oh I don't know what the battle points are used for I cannot find a way to spend these that I sounds, just have them that sounds mm. like that might be a relic of the desktop mode or yeah, yeah that's what I think oh uh, yeah it's everything feels slightly or not, not even slightly everything feels jankier on mobile it's still a good time it's still a good bus game to play on your phone but I honestly, when Fortnite comes to the Switch, I'd much rather play that. Um, so you're using actual motion, or not motion, but like touch controls for PUBG on yeah. mobile? Yep. Oh, man. How's the digital honestly, controls? Not as bad so, as you think. I was going to say, they the way they pulled that off, I'm not going to say it works really well, because PUBG is probably the worst type of game to ever make a mobile version of. But <laughs> yes. yeah. given all of that, the controls are... I'm impressed in how, how well they they did the controls because everything you can do pretty much in the regular version you can do on the mobile version, including uh, alt looking around. Um, it's got a nice auto run. You can auto run. Um, I like the smart loot pickup system. I, yeah. I heard that's really good to the point where they might want to play around with the idea of bringing I, it into the main game. I actually went back to play PUBG on PC and I missed that. I walked into a room after playing, you know, a full day of PUBG Mobile. Walked into a room and stood over something that should have gone on my rifle. I was like, what the fuck isn't this picking up? <laughs> oh, shit. I got to do that myself? Wow. Game is hard. Um, yeah. So, um... The, the one thing that I will complain about endlessly is that they use phone audio for player-to-player um, -player communication. Which means... Oh. So, this... These headphones are noise canceling. They have a mic on them just for noise canceling. But mm -hmm. if you try to use it in a phone, it turns that off and the audio gets super shitty while it tries to use the microphone for communications. So I cannot use these oh, headphones man. wirelessly for PUBG because it'll just get super muffly. It's bad. That sucks. Yeah. And there's, there's literally no way to change that. Uh, yeah. That, that does yeah. suck. But speaking of battle royales, 
Yes. We actually, I don't think Souls was around when we did this. Uh, we experimented with the new Battle Royale game that we thought was going to be pay to win. And we were kind of wrong. Radical Heights. I don't know if we yeah. played it long enough to say that we were wrong. Um, from what I've seen, I could tell you I don't see how that can actually be pay to win. Okay. Because I, it would take way too fucking long. So uh, I need to play it some more because a recent update, they changed the way the ATMs work a little bit. Well, that could also break um, it then. <laughs> but no, well, meaning that you can choose how much you want to withdraw, but as long as they keep the the cooldown the same, like proportionally, it won't be a big deal. So the the basically the big issue we were having uh, conceptually with this game before it came out was there's a persistent cash system, money system, in-game money. And you can, you find it on the map as you go, but then it's persistent between rounds. So you'll have like a bank account and you can amass all this money or whatever. And you can use that money in-game to purchase weapons at these little vending machines or whatever. But the key point that makes this not immediately pay to win is that to use that money in the game, you have to find an ATM on the map, and then you have to withdraw with the money that you need. And you, then you find a vending straight. machine that has yeah. the weapon you actually want, because a lot of vending machines have garbage. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it's, it's there was that trade-off, and uh, you had to withdraw a hundred bucks at a time, and it took some time, and it makes it makes a lot of noise too. So yes, it does. There was that trade-off. If you're going to sit there at an ATM and withdraw $100 at a time to get this $2,000 weapon, uh, you're going to make a lot of noise and stand there for a long time and somebody might just run up Pick and you off. pop you in the back of the head. So so this game, this game is interesting from a development standpoint. Um, mm -hmm. The developers tried a game and they said, wow, this was a massive fucking failure. So they said, hmm, <laughs> what's hot right now? Oh, Battle Royale. So they threw this thing together and what, what else is hot? To... Oh, 80s retro aesthetic. Yeah, so so they took the next 10 hours and they built a uh, barely playable uh, Battle Royale game and they said, hey, this is our game. Now, realistically, it was like three to six months of development time before they got this out, but it's still... So. Yeah, it's super early access, which it they do. They, it, they it are played missing. well, though. Yeah. It didn't play terribly. I, I'm not going to say it played well. Um, yeah, it didn't look like it played well. I've, I've seen it, that game. I thought it played well. The shooting, I thought, worked fine. I loved the way they ended the game. I thought the ending of that game the was better was really than cool. any ending other cool. Battle Royale. Yeah. It's, the, it's, the ending it's was got cool. a lot of nice little, little stuff. The whole game show, it's made out to be like a big game show. That's it's why the Smash Battle Royale is Battle Royale. Royale. Yeah, it's basically that. So there's all these little, there's prize boxes you can open and they, you know, burst and make noise. And then you can call in the supplies drops, which also make noise. Or you can stand on these little, it looks like Price is Right prize doors. And you stand there and you have to stand there for a certain amount of time while the bar progresses. And it makes this noise and plays all this music. And then it opens up and there it is. There's whatever your prize is, money or a gun or uh, whatever. The, the game isn't, I'm not going to say it's bad. It just really seems like a shallow cash grab to me. I, I have no reason to oh, go back yeah. and play Radical Heights. Um, and and when, when we say early access, I mean really it's extreme they literally really. call it extreme early access like yeah. the buildings are missing textures you have models that aren't finished you have buildings mm -hmm. that say oh hey come in we're a store you can buy a bunch of stuff here oh actually you can't because we literally Building have a model soon. inside of this it's <laughs> literally a rectangle um i really don't like that and it's personally. not it's not optimized very well either but yeah. it's yeah. but also it is free it, it's, it's 100 free. Free. free yeah but there's yeah, microtransactions in it already yeah uh, that okay i'm not gonna hold that against them because you're gonna see that going forward everything if, it, yeah. if the game's free to play they have to make some kind of i, out of it. I yeah. don't well, like just, souls i don't like it either but when you're building a game as a you know as a company you need a revenue stream and you need it up front and it's it's really easy when you're selling a game for 60 dollars and you can say hey we're expecting to sell this much we're expecting uh, you know, to for people to pay this price for it, that means we have X amount of runway to get this done. Um, to me, it was just more of a way, like, the way they went from the last game to immediately... Because th this is another one of those companies that's kind of just hopping on the hot train, right? They went yeah. from, from Lawbreakers 
which was the hot train at the time of MOBA, hero base, arena shooter, Overwatch, Paladins, some other, after another one, I forgot what it was. Oh, Vainglory, all those ones. Yeah. Battle right. They're like, oh yeah, we can hop in on this, right? They put that out, put out a bunch of packages inside the game, game flops. Then like three months later, or three to five months, however their amount of time was, they're on another super early access game just to get in on like the hype right now of mm-hmm. Battle Royale and throwing in microtransactions. It just seems yeah. so like, I yes. don't... Yeah. <laughs> but I'll, I'll, I, I'll, I'll name... I'll, I'll give you a name of another company that did the exact same thing and you feel completely opposite about it. All right. Epic. Oh, with Fortnite? And they also had Paragon. So, so Fortnite... Uh, Fortnite OG, yeah, they did absolutely bandwagon with Paragon. It, they did everything yeah. you just described. Like, if I didn't know you were talking about Radical Heights, I would have thought you were talking about Epic. So, so yeah, Fortnite, sure. Fortnite OG, Fortnite like Save Paragon. the World Edition, was built as, you know, Epic's new hot game that was supposed to carry them forward. Because it was co-op, it was fun, you battled zombies. Okay, those are old hat now, but whatever. It's supposed to be a, a good time. And then PUBG starts making fucking bank. Uh, Mm -hmm. And so they decide to 180 and now Fortnite Battle Royale. It's the reason people play Fortnite, right? It's Mm -hmm. it's people. People forget that Call of Duty has a campaign. People forget that Fortnite has saved the world mode because (laughs) the only thing they care about is the Battle Royale. Fortnite pulled an H1Z1. They did. They absolutely did. And and Mm -hmm. you know what? I I agree with Ark on this one. Epic absolutely did bandwagon that. I just think they did so in a far better way. I think they yeah, executed I think it way better. Way well, better. Because their team. I mean, come on. Oh, it's, it's fucking, it's epic. fucking epic. epic. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm gonna give a little bit of a converse opinion on this, but I posted in our Discord before Radical Heights released when they announced that it was gonna be free to play and releasing in two days or whatever. I said, All right, this is gonna be the biggest shit show of a game we've ever seen. Let's play it, you know, as a joke or whatever. Mm-hmm. And I actually like it. So do I. I can say firmly that I, I like it. I've played, I've only played three hours, three and a half hours of it. Um, but I see a lot of promise. I mean, it. developers aside, this could be a really good game. Now, whether or not they pull it off, that's a completely different conversation. Yes. But this has there are some mechanics that are unique. The you know, they're they're on they're on the right track. It's I, just whether they keep it on that track. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I think that I agree with you. The potential is absolutely there. Absolutely, one hundred percent. Uh the aesthetic, the way it just it doesn't it's, it feels like they don't even have to try. It just drips with fucking eighties and early nineties. Yeah. Yeah. They Cringe, nailed it. Cringy cheese, and it's, yeah, it's... <laughs> it's so good. It's so good. I mean, um, just from down to the little things, like you don't drop from a plane, you just kind of drop, but you don't parachute down, you just kind of like somersault onto the ground, and then yeah. you're just 80s going. action There's hero no style. Mm, yeah. There's some very important things in this that I think are important mechanically. Uh, no fall damage at all. Yeah. No matter yeah. what. And I really like the dodge roll mechanic. You've got dodge this is cool. dodge roll, and you can dodge roll through uh, windows, which is immensely satisfying. Yes. <laughs> you could just go through dodge rolling through all the glass windows, and that, that would be fun in itself. Is it 100 player? Um, I thought so. It is. Um, How big is their map? Is it like PUBG size, Fortnite it's, size? Uh, it's still big, but it's not PUBG size at all. They mm. do an interesting thing where it's not a circle. On the map, it's grid based, it's and they'll just start out, yeah. dropping squares. Certain squares will start to go, yeah. so it'll still do seen... the constriction, but it's not a uniform circle. Not a perfect circle, yeah. Have you guys seen Darwin Project? Because that sounds exactly like Darwin Project with maybe more players. This, this is exactly. Well, the players is an issue too. This is exactly because... what happened with Dota Two. It's exactly what happened with Overwatch. It's exactly what's happening with PUBG. Um, it's a, it's a bandwagon. It's another game yeah, industry it's, bandwagon, and and you know man, I'm, I'm gonna stop. I I said it last time. I said it last podcast, and I'm gonna say it again. If you are just now building your battle royale game, you are too fucking too late. late. Yeah, <laughs> for sure. Un- unless you liter- you have the hook, you have the new thing. Uh, even then, if you have something brand new and you can have it out in a couple months, you're not too late. 
you just have to have something that is just legitimately, oh my God, why has no one done this? It's like lightning striking the same place 27 times for you to be successful with that. Oh yeah, I'm not saying it's easy, but I'm just saying it. there is a way. Because PUBG had the market and then Fortnite came in. Fortnite carved itself out of the already polluted by PUBG H1Z1 markets. That's true. So but that's because, you, you know, PUBG and H1 had like huge technical problems that Fortnite didn't have or still mostly doesn't, you know, that had super bad lag. That's true. Crashing, uh, cheating. Cheating's still huge in H1 in PUB. Um, servers are still awful in PUB too. Well, did you guys hear about <laughs> what happened to the cheat creators in PUB? Yeah. Yeah, in China, 12 of them got arrested. I thought it was 15. Damn. Well, is it up? It, it may 15. be up to 15. I thought it was 15. I think I remember 15. Um, but they're going after creators and distributors of the cheat engines. <laughs> That's legitimate arrests. Wow. This, I mean, like, this <laughs> is our this is our cyberpunk future. This is this is what we yeah. asked for. <laughs> yeah, it's it's really. I'm gonna go get a weird. dark trench coat. I'll be back, guys. Yeah. Oh, that's true. Fortnite was free. Yes. Yeah. Um, yeah. On the subject of Battle Royale games, um, I played a very small one. And by small, I mean it's, you know, it's browser. You can play it within the browser. It's free. And it's called Survive.io. <laughs> Survive without the E at the end. So S U R V I V.io. Uh, you go to the website, you hit play, you're immediately in. There's no setup, no install, nothing. Um, it's it's top down 2D PUBG. Hmm. All the way down to the bandages, energy drinks, different guns, ammo types. Um, one cool thing I thought they did, being a top down, um, when you're on the outside of a building, you can't see inside of it unless you're close to a window. And then once you're inside the building, you can see inside of it. So they do a field and, of view from top down. Yeah, they, they the way they do that is actually, it works pretty well in the game. And um, you can get uh, like a 2x scope. And what that does is it just zooms out your view a little bit so you can see more. Oh, I thought that was pretty cool. That's, that's, that's really interesting. Cool. So in yeah. actuality, a zoom unzooms. Yep. That's kind of neat. So you can see more all the way up yeah, to that's, that's smart. That's but, um, really cool. It's, I mean, it's actually I'm, pretty I'm fun and it doesn't, right it doesn't look good. It doesn't look good at all. Like it's I, I actually, I just super bare you. bones. I, I mean, it looks all right. It looks it's functional. It's not impressive, but aesthetically no. everything fits. Yeah, 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 what, it's, what it's aesthetic fine. is it? Like, it looks like a flash game. It looks like yeah, a flash it, game. It's a yeah. 2D round oh, circle it's, based yeah. game. So it's, okay. It's completely oh, bird's eye view top down. I didn't know I was playing. Um, Holy shit. Games are quick. I got to the... I haven't won... I think I won one. But today hey, I played some. I got top three and it took like seven and a half minutes. So the games are short. You can jump in and out. It's actually pretty fun. I found myself playing it more uh, a longer amount of time than I thought I would. Uh, we're going to have to carry to, the rest uh, of this cast. Out. Yeah, I'm, I'm playing right now, so you guys can all help me. <laughs> oh, hey, I have a level mean? two it's... helmet. What were you saying about yeah. Path of Exile Souls? We never tried out their Battle Royale mode. That's top down with uh, not oh, guns. Oh. That's with like swords and you know their loot inside that game. Hmm. hmm. I'm not trying like, it. I forgot about that. It's, you know, Path of Exile with, yeah. like, swords and rings and armor stuff. Just generic Actually, RPG stuff. Yeah, no, they, yeah. they marketed it as that, too. They That was, like, their post when it came out was, like, hey, we know this is the big thing, so we're just going to make it because it's big. Speaking yeah. of, like, axes and rings, um, there, oh. was, there was a pretty big game that released recently that yeah. involves a axe. That's kind of like Thor's hammer, but it's an axe. Oh, yeah. So it's even cooler. It's so, um, up. The game. One of us here has played it. It's me. Oh, wait, did I spoil that too soon? Hold on. Keep going. I'll, Damn it. I'll do it You're not supposed to say it yet. One of us. It's Souls. Yes. Somebody, See, that's how you know. Somebody whose name. <laughs> <laughs> that's a lot of fun. That game is a lot of fun. I'm going to play it later. Oh, you're talking about that game. Yeah, well, once again, once have. again, we have <laughs> to carry the cast. Oh, okay, Tom now. is I'm playing before, the Before we move game. on, Survive.io also supports party, so you can play doubles and squads. Hell yeah! Oh, cool. That's actually Anyways, pretty neat. We gotta do yeah. this. God of War. How God is it? Is, yes. God of War is already it's probably... so much boy. It's probably already in my game of the year position. Like... Wow, it, it's I don't I can't think of a game coming out this year that could put that could possibly be better. Like, really? 
I can name I one. Boy. Which one? Red Are Dead. you talking? You better not. Oh, Boy. no, not even. See, Red Dead to me is still just going to be a general rock star triple uh, third person shooter. Like, it's not, it's still not going to be what God of War has done to the game. Red Dead Redemption is still just going to be. <laughs> Eric's going to go punch things. He'll be back. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I, I fucking love Red Dead. Uh, a yeah, well, SMS messenger brings that. up a good point. Smash Brothers. I, yeah, a, it won't get gaudy contention, but it's going to be fantastic. Ah, uh, Smash Brothers come out this year, right? But did, still, did anyone still... forget that Dark Souls is coming out again in twenty days? I wouldn't. I would put that in Game of the Year for when it came out originally, though. No, it's Game of the Year every year. <laughs> but okay. the problem yeah, is, you're right, you're right. it has to be good. It's. It'll. I think it'll be fine. As far as I've, from what I've seen of the new Dark Souls, the re-release, it, it seems okay. But anyway, God of War. God of boy. God of War. Um, God of War. It's, I think I've been having such a blast with it, and I've streamed it. I've streamed all of me playing it, right? If you go through my VODs, it's me saying, this game is so good every five minutes. It's just <laughs> nice. me like, oh my god, this game is great. This game is, is so is, good. I can't believe how fun this game is. It's so cinematic. It's yeah. You you saw me playing that. No cut. Awesome. No cut. Wait, yeah. No cut. Just yeah, yeah. I think it's pretty. Yeah. The, no cut. Definitely. Just watch the stranger boss fight if it's you're curious crazy. about this game. It's it's like it's the new best anime fighter. Like literally, <laughs> those fights were like the most Dragon Ball. Slash, I was gonna like, say ridiculous fight. It's so good. Everything about that game is so fun, except for one thing. But um, so you came in from this playing one and two. You never played three, but you've played one I and two. Play I played one and two and whatever the PS. So were you prepared for this? And how did like how did it like you perceive this when you jumped into it? Because I know I, it's not the same. I perceive this game actually really bad because of how I jumped into it. <laughs> Because not because of the game, but because I of the difficulty I picked. Yeah, I watched you do All this. Right. Oh, um, I picked the hardest difficulty, which isn't God of War. Like I, I don't, I really don't think that it should even be in the game. The hardest difficulty totally changes it from like a brawler sort of juggle system with all this stuff to like what I would consider like a third person shooter, where it's just like you have an axe, right? You have Thor's axe, which there's story stuff. Anyway, anyway, anyway. Um, so you throw the axe because you can only throw the axe to be enemies because otherwise they just they don't flinch they don't do normal stuff that you would do in a brawler to like juggle them or stun them stuff like that they don't do any of that so you go and swing and then you hit them but then they're like who are you some god i don't care and then they smack you and all your health is gone and that's it and, then and you this is only so the fact that you can't they don't get like stunned on hits is that because of the yeah. difficulty or is that yeah it's because of the difficulty okay um, cause I, I actually switched the difficulty down cause I was actually not having a good time with the game. I was getting yeah. so bored and like, I just thought the game was actually not that good based on some of the mechanics. And then I went, I, I switched down cause I, I had actually Googled it. I'm like, why is God of War not fun? It's like, what is wrong yeah. with me? I don't why enjoy God, God of War. Fun. Yeah, no, I thought I was missing something. I'm like, am I missing something? I think I Googled something like, uh, I put like. How to combat God of War hardest difficulty. I'm like, I don't understand. I must be missing something. Because the other thing is, too, they don't have the same sort of, um, uh, like, to, not, it's not a tutorial, but they don't have the same sort of, like, show as to how to play the game as when I switched mm. to the lower difficulty. So I'm like, I must be missing something. There must be it's something that I'm missing. Like, people trouble. who have already beat the game. It's, it's not even the same game. Like, I've, I've, I've yeah. gone pretty far in normal difficulty. It's not the same game. It's totally, it's totally wrong. It's, it's, it doesn't feel like God of War. Like it's just throwing the axe over and over because if you don't throw the axe, then they don't care. It, the, the, the throwing of the axe has more stagger on them than actually going up and hitting them with like heavy hitting abilities. Oh. For some reason, it's, it's weird. That's so I gave up on that. I'm gonna beat it later. That is to me why I always play the game to start with on normal difficulty. I've only been burnt once by that, and that was Horizon Zero Dawn. You need to play on a hardest difficulty to be able to fully get it. But most of the time, I feel I, normal mode should be what the developers intended the game to be. Yeah, I felt The Last of Us, was. I think I would have not liked it as much if I played on normal the first time. It changes it. A, it's a different of type of games. game. But yeah, difficulty is weird. That's tough to pull off. Well, yeah, because I even read an article on on the hardest difficulty was 
designed and totally redone i guess by other people they're like mm -hmm. yeah we want this to be a totally different experience um they just didn't say that they wanted it to be a third person shooter they <laughs> it was it was just weird but the normal game right i went i went down a difficulty because they they even say at the beginning it's like you can't change this difficulty if you pick it it's totally different it's going to be a different experience and all this stuff i'm like oh, okay whatever so i got through like a little bit and then i'm like I, this is so boring so i switched down the normal game is so fun in combat there's no stagger the other thing that the hardest difficulty had is enemies could level up mid fight if you've got an enemy at low health they would level up and the game is based on levels enemies have levels um the game if you get an enemy to low health the the enemy would level up and then get health back so all of a sudden oh, you have nice. to hit them you have to throw the axe weird. at them like eight more times and then they have their health back and then they're stronger it's i just didn't like hard mode hard mode just didn't seem good um but the normal mode is so fun because i've gotten to the point now where you have I, I've leveled up my weapons and you get skills and stuff. And so you can go in and you can do some really fun combos. Like, you know, it, it really brings back the old God of War of uh, knock them up in the air, uh, juggle them in the air, try and get their health really low. I don't remember if God of War 1 or 2 had executions quite like this game. Um, Not in the I same think, way. Yeah, this game has what I described as Doom style, like Doom 2016 yeah. style executions. Okay. You go up, you hit a button, and all of a sudden you're ripping, you're ripping their body in half, or like throwing them on the ground. Oh, I think it, that's uh, there's got to be a Doom. Reference. They did have they did have those in God of War. I think it was three, where yeah, like once it. you damage them so much, they'll give you a quick time button to press, and then you'll do like yeah. a badass execution. I remember. Um, the Medusa people, I think it was. You like put on. There's one where they like threw it on the ground, like essentially curb stomp them on the ground. Hmm. Oh, nice. Yeah. Earth, yeah. You, said, you said a word that I was going to say, and I was going to ask. God of War is pretty notorious for their quick time events. Uh, I wasn't a huge fan of those. How, do they? How is that in this? There are no quick time events that I've seen so far. That is um, there even, are, even the executions. Lines. Executions are a quick time. You just hit a button and he does the execution. Is there's it always, a, there's is a it always the same one? Yeah. It it's, is it's always like the Doom. same one. Okay. Okay. It, it, there's, um, it's, it's worse than Doom. Like Doom, you, I don't remember in Doom, you could like aim at their leg or their body or their head and you would do like different true. executions. And then some of the, ver they had variations on like head executions, arm ex stuff like that. Yeah. The only thing with God of War is that the execution is always the same. No matter where you look, anything like that. Mm. And executions are a very efficient way to kill enemies. So you're seeing the same the same mm. thing a lot. Uh, um, on, on quick time events, just just throwing this out there, God of War One on the PS2 was basically the Lord of Quick Time Events. That was good game design. <laughs> so God of War and Resident Evil 4 um, basically started the trend of quick time events and they were seen as really cool and innovative and a way to show cutscenes while still demanding gameplay hmm. it was seen as a bridge and then everyone Makes abused sense. them and it became yeah. the press a to not die yeah. man <laughs> that, that turned into yeah and then, heavy rain, came out. <laughs> exactly. and then heavy rain came out exactly <laughs> and heavy then it became rain. press circle to jason or whatever it was yeah. jason jason jason, jason. <laughs> jason. <laughs> really i i never played heavy jason. rain jason it's not uh, worth it's, playing uh, no, it's bad. The best it's part about heavy rain is seeing those YouTube compilations of people who like increased the animation <laughs> intensity. Yeah, yep. so yeah. It's oh. one of the funniest things I've ever seen oh, in my, my life. God, that's great. <laughs> those are great. Yeah, but um, oh, there's no Sean. there's no quick time events. No, Sean is another one. You can do both. It's press it's press yeah. triangle to Jason is Sean. Yeah. <laughs> um so i have a friend who's been playing this and he's like oh the combat's blah blah, blah. it's like dark souls blah 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 but what you're just saying is that the combat still feels god of war -y? oh yeah i think the combat uh, as you progress right as you in the beginning you start with no real combo potential especially in the beginning um later on you get a lot more combo potential from skills and because you can eventually like you have i have a bunch of skills to just stick onto an enemy like uh, like enemies knock them up dash to them there's a bunch of stuff that like that that just helps me continue fighting things um i think it's a lot more god of war now that i've gotten level ups okay. it definitely feels better so it's a little slower at first but as you progress so you get slow. back to what you're used to god of war being 
I don't think the game becomes God of War for like probably two hours, two and a half hours, oh. maybe three. Um, I would say even longer, depending on how God of War you want it to be. I just now hit a point where it it opened up a lot, and I'm I'm pretty far in. Like I don't know how far I am in, but I'm. I feel like I'm a good way in, and all of a sudden the game opened up huge. Like, it was kind of like a huge step. It was almost like, it's almost like dropping four steps on like a staircase, like you're just walking down, right? And then yeah. all of a sudden you're like, oh, I can maybe just skip a, skip a stair. And you just like maybe going down a little bit quicker. And then all of a sudden at the end you're like, I'm just gonna jump and like get to the bottom. <laughs> and that's what they kind of did with, with how they paced it, which. Sure. I'm not complaining because I kind of like just the sudden shift. So does it um, ever hit that almost Dynasty Warrior-esque feel? Because that was my favorite part about God of Wars is it was just you the felt step powerful. below Dynasty Warriors. And I'm going to walk in this room and massacre everything okay. at once. Um, It's a little bit harder to combo bigger groups of enemies because there are they throw in a lot of types of enemies. There are a lot of types of enemies. There are probably, from what I've already seen now, probably close to 40 different types of enemies. There, oh it, there's God. variety. There's so much variety. It's not like, um, you remember Rise for Xbox? Like the, the launch title for Xbox One? Mm-hmm. It, was, uh, it was like a Roman game. Oh, um, yes, 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 yes. All the enemies in that were just the same. It was, it was generic guy with sword. It was generic dual building guy and then generic shield guy. It was three enemy types. Yeah. And that was the whole game with reskins. This is like, you go to an area, there's enemies. You go to a new area, it's different enemies. You go to a new area, it's different enemies. And then as you get higher leveled, enemies have variations on themselves as well. Um, So there's a lot of variety. So while the executions might be the same and get daunting, you'll at least be able to see different shit because you're going to be killing Mm -hmm. a lot of different things. Yeah, yeah. There's yeah In In that aspect, yeah, there's a lot of variety in between the executions before you get back to killing the same enemy type again. Pick your own gore. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> oh man. I will say though, the first time you see the executions, it's like it's it's awesome. It's 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 like chills down your back sort of. Like I can't believe I just watched that. It was so cool. <laughs> so um it. what about um the hundredth time you do it? Is it still chill down your back or is it hurry up and get the fuck over? <laughs> um it's it's like half chill. I don't, okay. I'm never sad to see an execution <laughs> just because the, the, the executions are pretty brutal. They're really fun to watch still because they're, they're the same like Red Dead Redemption. I loved it. But when it came to skinning animals, dude, it took oh, like yeah. five to 10 seconds. Like, I, I know what you're doing. Just fucking do it. So I actually <laughs> yeah. got to the point I would start exploiting the horse glitch where if you step the horse on what you're skinning, you instantly skin it. Okay. Oh. So, yeah, I hated I hate being stuck at something i've accomplished it don't make me wait on it i don't there like are, that hmm. there are benefits to executions hmm. though there's a there is a super super deep okay it's not super super deep. it's like kind of a deep sort of equipment um uh aspect to the game of like what what kind of what kind of perks do you want? What kind of rune stones do you want? What kind of armor do you want? What kind of stats do you want? Do you want to focus yes. on just hitting things? Do you want to focus on using your abilities more? Do you want to focus on just taking hits because you can? Like, um, there's you you can kind of spec out your character, so you don't have to execute. But my build personally, I get health back every time I do execute somebody, so. But you see, that, that makes it good. worse to me. That's, is if there's an actual benefit, I'm going to do it constantly, and I'm going to be bored out of my fucking mind because I'm waiting for the damn execution so the, constantly. Uh, the specs but, and but the, the skill execution. trees and the equipment, uh, it, that's the only thing I'm seeing that's even remotely negative about this game. Uh, is oh, that, really? I don't like that. Is that, you know, cool, it's, it's a God of War game and it does everything right, except why the fuck is this here? It's literally stopping me from killing people as fast as I possibly could because a menu exists somewhere. Not that you have to hmm. do the equipment and you have to do the skill tree, but that it's not important. Yeah, it, it yeah. distracts you from being the god of war and being able to say boy more often. <laughs> There's boy. no first triangle to boy. boy in this game, unfortunately. Boy. There's no uh, what? Boy. 
no press triangle to boy boy that's just press that's just kind of in the game <laughs> don't worry that'll, that'll be one of the uh, dlc packs yep yeah press, press x to boy, to boy. that'll actually be the name of the dlc pack 15 oh, dollars no. press triangle to boy that is in the game i actually forgot there is a section where you do press tri- you press square to boy nice yes. there, that, that is the thing actually i take it back <laughs> yes my god good sony carries it forward press square they've to boy. done it boy they've done it but on a boy. good game though boy 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 so boy so, boy or, boy speaking boy. Spe- boy. speaking of things that are that are hard to watch uh i i bought metal gear solid 5 thanks to a tip uh oh yeah 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 that that game was like stupid cheap for metal gear solid 5 ground zeros and the phantom pain uh so and all the dlc that. and all the dlc it came like, with all the dlc which is pretty good fucking everything for seven dollars um nice. yeah um so i way way back when and this is this is even going back like pre this relaunch of 72 pin connector uh, Metal Gear Solid 5 Ground Zeroes came out and was instantly panned by everyone uh, because it was a, I think it was a thirty or forty dollar demo. The game it was is a over. Demo. Yeah. The the game is over in literally two hours. It is a two hour game. Mm. You can replay it if you want to do like different strats and try different things and play with the world. Uh, but for the majority of the game it's it's two hours and i think we might be having slight video problems right now <laughs> yes uh keep it rolling, keep keep it okay. rolling. anyway uh We're fine yeah they're they're in up here and so it's or they're they're on discord so it's okay but anyway um so ground zeros is absolutely a 30 dollar tech demo um i i don't understand how this was even sold um now we've got double Adam. Um, so what I think happened is Kojima is and his team are building the Fox engine. Uh, they said, okay, look, we've got all this cool stuff. The game looks beautiful. We've got a bunch of gameplay. Now we have to build the content. Uh, we've got this cool little demo area. We've got a vertical slice of gameplay. Everything that you could possibly do in the main game, you can do in this little demo area. Uh, and it, a lot of game developers will do this. They will build tiny areas with one of every item, one of every type of encounter to test the systems and how they interact with each other. It's a, a great way to build games. We did this when we built our game, as we had a tiny little test room that had one of everything in it. Um, I can ima- I can only imagine, this is pure speculation, that Konami said, Hey, um, thanks, Kojima. Could, could you, like, box that up for us? Can we, like, sell this? He's like, no, it's, it's a debug level. It's literally there just so we could develop against it. And Konami's like, no, nah, no, nah, dude, it's cool. It's cool. Don't worry about it. Just call it Metal Gear Solid 5 subtitled something. I don't know. I don't give a shit. <laughs> Put some sub on it. <laughs> yeah, just fucking, yeah. fucking push it, man. And then they they did. Uh, so mm-hmm. yeah, that sucks. Um, yeah. Especially because the the beginning the story in it is somewhat important. Uh, I you know I actually completely disagree with this. I heard that oh, as really? a whole five was fun to play, but a shit storm and ignore the story. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so I've yeah, been really? playing a little bit of the Phantom Pain, and honestly, this is the only because Metal Gear Solid Four story was a shit show. But I I enjoyed going through it. Well, enjoyed is probably a little strong word. I put up going through it because it was a Metal Gear game. Um, but with with five, there is literally no reason for me to pay attention to the story. I don't like mm-hmm. anyone. Um, oh, are you talking about wait, are you talking about the full game? Okay. Yeah, I'm talking about Phantom Pain now. Okay. Uh, Ocelot uh, is he is literally a voice from a box in a tutorial. That is that is his entire character is, hey, Snake, you should go here and do this thing. Like, there's no jabs. There's no reason for these two people to be friends. How do we get from kicking his ass in MGS3 to him being essentially a babysitter on Mother Base? Like, what the fuck's going on? I, I feel like I've missed out on a giant chunk of story here. And 
-hmm. Everything's incomprehensible, but not in a good Metal Gear way. I literally don't want to play this game anymore because I played Metal Gear for the stupid, incomprehensible anime-esque story, and I get mm -hmm. none of that. It's a fun game. It's great to I've, play. I've, I've heard the gameplay is actually really, really oh, exceptionally it's so good. so much fun. Gameplay it controls really, good. really well. The guns are fun. The AI is outstanding. I mean, at, for a Metal Gear game, the gameplay is top-notch, and I've never seen anything like it. Uh, mm. Only Kojima The graphics pull... still stand up. They do. They really do. It's, it's still beautiful. Um, but there's no story there. If you're going into MGS5 for a continuation of the Metal Gear solid storyline, don't. Just, it's just weird. Don't. How far into it are you? Uh, I'm only a few hours in, so I'm not super far into it, but you know, three hours into Metal Gear Solid, I was just like, wait a minute, there's a guy and he was transparent and he came through the floor and what the fuck, that was a girl and that guy, that guy's totally naked, he's in a corner, like what the fuck's going on? And the DARPA chief, he just fucking like croaked, like what the fuck, man? I had to look on the back of my fucking game packaging to call Meryl. Like, three hours into Metal Gear Solid, I was hey, in spoilers. the zone. I was in that world. And spoilers, three, man. Three it's hours, only been, like, 20 years. <laughs> right? And three hours into Metal Gear Solid Five, I was like, wait a minute. What's that character's name? Because I've literally seen them once. And they said, boss, to me. And that's it. Boy. Yeah, this game takes a long time to get into it. I've played a decent amount of ways through it. Press X to boss. But something else that's a really good deal right now um, on Humble Bundle, um, $12, you can get a hold of, um, I blanked, uh, Destiny 2. I think oh, yeah, that's I far to too much. That. Yeah, gonna... Far, far, far too much to pay. Fuck Destiny. Fuck Destiny 2. Fuck the whole thing. <laughs> I, I agree. I'm going to tell him on this so much. God. The game is It's so wasted bad. potential. The whole thing is wasted well, potential. The point, though, is not the destiny of now, the destiny of later. No. No. They gave nah, up. It's... The game's done, man. The game's finished. There's nothing else coming they said this, they said that yeah. Everyone said the same thing the about Destiny. The fact that destiny. it's already on a humble bundle for that cheap seems like they're desperate. Well, you know, that's they're... also because they want an adoption base because their move is not the initial game sale. Dude, even even like yeah. the, well, the even, expansions they put out right now or are that are currently out they're, they're worthless they're even worse than bad they broke fundamental areas of the game that well, they had to go back how and familiar fix. are you with destiny one uh very little bit aside this from everyone is destiny pitching. one all over it. again yeah, it I, is why, destiny one all over again. why would i pay for this i the only reason i have destiny 2 is because somebody said oh yeah i got it with my graphics card do you want a code and i was like yeah sure i guess <laughs> that's how i got it too and i still don't yeah. play i'm like i would rather have had a different game come with my graphics card yeah, exactly. so here's the question were you guys playing with people or by yourself both i played with people like i only played with people during destiny like people you knew or randos people people i knew okay okay i was gonna say because that changes a lot if you're not yeah, playing with people you I, know it just it yeah. still was bad because people i know who have it played it enjoyed the shit out of it it's just there's not a lot of it the gunplay feels nice if if gunplay they, is the only good thing yeah if, isn't that the main thing for a shooter though i don't play I mean, mmos it's, it's an mmo though it's, yeah it's it's a shooter that's loot based I, I do not it's still play. An MMO. Yeah, it's okay, an okay. MMO. MMO doesn't make it not a shooter. Massive multiplayer it, online you can't, you shooter. You can't grade it on just the shooter yeah, part. No. You have to grade it for the MMO part as well then. And, and you know what happens yeah. when you well, get what do loot? you want? You want to have a pickaxe and go run around and no, hit I'll some tell rocks? You, I'll tell you exactly what you want. I will tell you exactly <laughs> what you want. And I think Souls made the game better. I think Souls, the game better. I think Souls is going to agree with me on this. If I, want, if, if I am building Destiny 3... I want Borderlands 3, the MMO. When I get a yeah. new gun in Destiny, it's like, oh, look, it does the exact same thing, except it does slightly more damage. Woo! When I get a new gun in Borderlands, I'm like, did that fire six rockets made out of puppies that were holding dynamite in their mouths? Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yes, you did. Welcome to Borderlands. Well, that's like saying you want GTA 5 to be more like Saints Row. No, like, I, I, want, I want a reason to get this gear. I want a reason to care. And if you can't do that through fun gameplay, which apparently Destiny is just completely inept and unavailable to do, then at mm. least to give me, give me a story or give me a reason to fight instead of just some guy being like, hmm, yeah, you should go kill There's those things. No story. Why? Well, because you see that, that big, like, sphere thing in the sky? Well, I guess it's like a god or something. I don't know. Like, I you still don't know what that thing is. I, I don't know. Like, there, and then the thing, no like, idea. randomly stops you from respawning sometimes because you're, like, not <laughs> yeah. being penetrated by its god ray. Yeah, penetrated by its god ray. Clip that. Um, I, I don't get it. I just don't get it. It's... 
it, on top of that, the, the the loot stuff isn't like Borderlands, where even sometimes it doesn't even give you more damage. Like on a level up, people have found that you can beat the hardest the hardest raids with base level one gear because the stats matter so little. It's yeah. just it's not. It's what kind of game is it? it it's literally just like it's a time a shooter. Sink. That's that's the. That's all Destiny 2 is built for. It's built to sink maximum amount of player time into I this world. That poorly too, no, no, no. Though. It's not like, a, it's not no a time sink is the thing. It's not a time sink right now. This is actually delivering on what they initially said is they want people to play it, put it back on the shelf for a month or two, new shit, play it for a week, put that, it back on the month or two. That is literally the exact opposite of the, what the developers Why would say. They actually want that? No, that, the, the developers said they, they wanted want this to be a lifestyle game where you play for an hour no, or two I'm every saying, day. I was saying Destiny 1. Oh. In Destiny 1, that's what they their pitch was, that you're going to play mm -hmm. it, you're going to put it back, new shit's going to come and happen, you're going to pick it back up, you're going to play it, you're going to put it back, new shit's going to happen, you're going to pick it up. <sighs> I don't know I, why you would play it for an hour or two every day anyway, because it locks you out of everything once you've done it one time. Yeah. You do it once and it's like, ah, come back next week. Yep. You but can't, you literally, the beginning of the game is so unprogressive that you have to literally wait a week to even move on because of how little gear you can get in that game at a time. It's like, you do everything and then you're not, you don't, Sometimes you don't even feel like you're progressed because it's still luck based. Like if you don't get a drop that you need, you're not going to level up that week. You, and then you come back next week. The gear ratio was adjusted because the initial complaint, you were getting too much loot and gear. So they drastically cut it back because complaints said it was happening too much. Hmm. People are wrong. See, this is the other problem with Bungie <laughs> is that they're, they're, they're listening to the wrong things. And they're, the, I mean, okay, this is the thing with any dev, right? game comes out people scream at them it's just like <laughs> constant barrages of like this sucks this sucks this sucks this is great this is great this is great dev should be able to sort through that and be like this is good criticism this is some random 14 year old that i'm don't care and, about right and there's there's an issue with generally how feedback works with humans if something is great we mm. don't scream at the devs going oh my yeah, god yeah, the new building mechanic perfect, in fortnite you. where i can just hold the button and it automatically builds stairs as i run for it is the best thing ever and you guys are gods can i yeah. suck your dick sir please like we, yeah. we're not <laughs> sending like death threats to the the game developers of fortnite saying this is literally the best thing ever and you have substantially improved my life but mm -hmm. if so much of a pixel clips through a bush when i have that disguise on you bet your ass that person's getting it yeah threat. bet your <laughs> <Yeah>. ass <laughs> what, what i'm saying I, is that the negative feedback always outweighs the positive and even if the majority of their your community is happy with something they're not going to tell you about it you realize right. i dismissed everything you said after developer let me suck your dick right that's fine. Okay. <laughs> Clip that. Okay. Too. Everything else was ignored. I was like, what the fuck did he just say? Yep. Yeah. But, okay. Love it. Hate it. Whatever. It's 12 bucks. It's on Humble. It's not a bad price. Because um, you have other games with it. Maybe you're not buying it for Destiny 2. Speaking of not a bad price and new release. Well, new? New, old, new release. The Forest. Oh. Yeah, we played this a lot. Yes. We played this a long, really long time yesterday. Like how, how many hours did we play? I can let me check when you messaged me on Steam, and then we played from then until midnight my time. I came. So, I came. Yeah, in, that was a long I played time. with you guys for a couple hours. I left. I ate. I came back, and I played with you guys for another couple hours. <laughs> eight hours. We played that game eight hours. Damn. And I was fun, hoping it would be less than that. The fun thing is, <laughs> it was, it was good. we were playing it different ways, and that was yeah, we were. really cool. Like, so uh, this is a survival, crafting, base building, spelunking kind of game. Mm -hmm. It's not procedural mm -hmm. generated. It is the same map every time. So yes. this isn't going to be... It doesn't quite check all of the, the hype word boxes of the yeah. last wave of games. But That's I will true. say procedural generated is a hype word, but it gives yeah. ungodly replayability. Yeah, sometimes. Sometimes. So, yeah, you can sometimes. do it poorly. Or you can... Well, Yes, I'm not going to count about the poor because you do any game poorly, it's going to suck. It doesn't matter what mechanic. I don't know, man. Sneak King is pretty great. <laughs> <That's>... anyway, <laughs> You're not wrong. <laughs> anyway. Okay, time out. Uh, Sidetrack. Has anyone played that? Because I never played it. I actually have never played, played I've never played oh, it. Oh, what? I played all the Burger King games. <laughs> nice. Oh, my, my God. My idea was, oh, my God. 
I was, okay, when did that come out? I was like so young. I'm like, oh my god, free games. I want them because I can't buy games. I did play I Yaris. The, the free Xbox that? Live game. Toyota oh, yeah, developed a game. It, it actually won several uh, worst game of the year awards. It was so <laughs> fucking broken. That's cool. Yeah. I like when games get so bad you play them. But uh, The Forest. Yeah. Uh, this isn't Forest a bad game. Good. This is really good. No, it's not. It's, it's actually it's really good. It's visually beautiful very too. pleasing. Yes. I, I agree, Adam. It is very beautiful. The it's water. Lush. It and one of my one of the cool things is in the graphics settings there are different color grading options you can choose from there's like mm. what 10 or 15 of them i've never seen a game do this before and i thought that was really really unique you can kind of give the game whatever visual feel you want kind oh. of from fully being immersed in the darkness of a cave to cheesing it the fuck out that's uh, sort of sort of not okay, i mean it's stuff it's dark. like i tried all of them i haven't adjusted yeah, any it's color grading filters it's like you know you've got original and there's one for modern there's one called epic there's one that's warm there's one that's cooler there's do they one have that's... one that gives you like a snout in the puppy dog ears no no yeah, it's not see. snapchat filters yeah you would um <laughs> but yeah so like when we were playing these guys were just diving through caves being badasses <laughs> yeah well i was doing that with them until a baby monster killed me and <laughs> oh, then yeah. um i just made a base <laughs> the whole time they were it. doing that so i lost all my gear which that sucked so it's got really uh pretty robust uh crafting and base building mm. um and then it's got this survival horror element. It's got the exploration. Got to eat, got to drink, got to find shit. Yeah, it's got the survival stuff. So I uh, I don't like these types of games because I got burnt out on Minecraft yeah. really heavily. I might pick this up uh, because one of the things that this does that I haven't seen any survival base building game do is you guys stumbled upon that big ass pit, right? And then mm. you, one of you pulled up your menu to do some crafting, and in your notes section, it just said, find a way down into the pit. It automatically mm -hmm. put that in there. Like, hey, we know that these objectives are totally freeform and random, and you know, it's, it's not a game about objectives or accomplishing any one goal, but we're going to throw this on your list because we think it's interesting. We think you might have a good yeah. time with it, and I really like that. I can go to also, a list... It also is kind of about one goal, too. I mean, there's the base building and stuff you have to survive, but the whole point is you're supposed to find your son and uh, presumably escape. Specifically my son. It so there, son. there is an end game, yeah. which they did kind of add in on the 1.0 release, or they at least added a bunch of new end game stuff. I never got that far in early access. Yeah. I've... But there is some bit of story that you can kind of unlock as you go between finding little snippets of newspaper clippings or pictures or uh you know dead bodies of the the environmental the storytelling looked insane like yeah, yeah it's there good. was a section you guys were in a cave and there were like seven broken laptops around you and a bunch of dead mm -hmm. bodies it's like what the fuck kind of land party happened here yeah. Um, <laughs> some of it I think feels weird that they spawn some of the stuff and I don't mean in like the what's happening but just like why the mm -hmm. fuck would this be some of that yeah, is it's it's just like why are there so on. many laptops in this cave but really that serves the purpose of you can get, use the computer chips and the laptops for crafting stuff yes so, but I feel also, I think there's a deeper story there too like you do yeah. to me I think you're so you're I think I'm seeing it a different way you're seeing it as like this doesn't make sense I'm thinking of it as like why is this here like we, we 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 dove at one point through like a really long water cavern to find like a bunch of tents set up in between mm -hmm. another really long water section and there's just like a bunch of dead bodies camps were set up a bunch of crates and like bibles and stuff and i was just like people made it here they're trying to get away from something that they literally decided to swim through a tunnel through a water tunnel with all their supplies just to get away and they still died they rather they just starved to death in this cave than to actually go back out Mm -hmm. to me that's i'm seeing it more as i guess a different story perspective yes i mean that part yes but you go down a rope and you find 20 laptops just sitting there to me it Maybe. felt like we yeah, needed yeah. to get you guys chips so we had to find a spot to oh, dump no these. dude dude it was it was some high school teacher with a pack a new <laughs> pack of chromebooks trying to get back to the classroom that's what it was yeah. <laughs> 
And yeah, then she realized that Chromebooks are worthless <laughs> unless you have internet. So she just dumped them on the floor and <laughs> swam back to camp. Why do I even have this? I mean, realistically, why did that plane have that many flares and sticks of dynamite on it to begin with? Correction. Why did a plane uh, have sticks of dynamite on it? What? You've never <laughs> yeah, flown know. with dynamite yeah. before? But, you know, those are just dumb little details. Yeah, well, I don't think it all came from the plane either. Some of the, like, snippets on news was, like, w way dated. Some of it's, like, these people are missing. It's, like, how could there already be articles if, if we just plane crashed, you know? Some of it mm -hmm. seems like it, it, it's multiple happenings there. Yeah. I don't know. It's well, some be. of it was old-timey, it felt. Oh, well, yes. Yeah, because, so it's definitely older. Well, I mean, the, the inhabitants there are cannibals who presumably might have been not originally there. But at the same time, I mean, you still have those almost... Oh, I never thought about it that way, that there was someone like, maroon, uh, people marooned there and then became cannibals. Or something. Yeah. I mean, there could, there could be a lot to it. I don't, I, don't, I don't even know if how much the game tries to focus on creating a good narrative. Yeah, sure. I mean, it's, I'm sure it's more about the gameplay, but uh, the monster design. There are some creepy looking dudes yeah. in this game. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and when you guys told me they're cannibals, I'm thinking they're all going to be humans. Kinda. I was wrong. It's a reach. Some of them are multiple humans mushed together into one abomination it, of a thing. It reminded they, me of something that I'm not going to name because of spoilers and this game didn't come out very long ago. But it's certainly uh, one of those creatures reminded me a lot of a thing during an end game yeah. sequence. Um, um, I don't know what you're talking about. I don't know okay, what you're talking fine. about, but, but type fine. it in the thing because I'm curious. I will, I will, I will tell oh, you. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Or we but, just say, uh, hey, don't listen for five. No, no, I'm yeah. not going to do that. Because um, all I have to do is say the name of the game. Oh, okay, okay. okay. Yeah. So the, the enemy design is cool. There are some very, very spooky parts. Uh, exploring the caves okay, are spooky. Okay. Very much in danger. Uh, it's easy to get overrun by these things. They're hard to fight. You're not just going to mow them down. Um, that guy, but like, the, the, the standard human-esque enemy didn't give a shit that you were hitting him with an axe. He kept yelling, <laughs> but he was just like, dude, stop. And you would hit him again They're and yeah, be like, tanky. dude, really? They're pretty tanky. Yeah, they take a lot of hits. And then you they, have ones you think are normal humans, and then you realize when they're next to another one that, oh shit, these guys are actually bigger. These are pretty They're tall. huge. Yeah. They're some huge Some of them have things. armor on, and some of them are shaped differently. Some of them um, have blood but, all over their bodies. Yeah. Yeah. But one of the coolest things about this game is the enemy AI. Mm, yes. Um, so the first time, well, not necessarily just the first time, but, you know, you'll be, you know, perusing the old forest, looking for sticks and rocks and stuff. Oh, I'm As build me one a little shelter. is tempted to do. And berries. And this thing will run up on you. But it doesn't just like, oh, there's the player, attack him. It'll like, it'll run up and it'll be hesitant. And it'll kind of like... It's checking you out and testing yeah. you. It'll maybe like circle around and keep looking at you. Um, and then maybe like it'll rush you and, but it won't attack you. It'll just rush you and then like turn away at the last minute to see like how you were going to respond if you were going to be defensive and skittish or if you were going to be aggressive. And sometimes they don't attack you and sometimes they do. And I, I guess they have multiple enemy types in which some of them are more likely to be aggressive, but it's not like every time you encounter this X type of enemy, he's going to react the same way. It's they're kind of individual a little bit. Well, the thing that you introduced me to about yeah. this, that was cool was, so, that, yeah, you got it. So if one comes up on you and you get into a fight or whatever, um, it might decide to run away. And when it runs away, it might decide to bring its friends back and find you so you initially crash those things don't know you're there but then once one sees you and you don't kill it it they know you're there so and that's i think that's when most of the attacks start happening at night and at your yeah. base and stuff is when they they kind of you know, they know there's something else that's, there and then, and i think that was fucking bad. cool our first was, our first base we were getting attacked constantly yeah, and I think that was my bad. I made a I, new base. No one saw me go there, and I never <laughs> seen an enemy there the entire time. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's really fucking and it, cool. And it's but and I think that works both on a micro level and a macro level. So uh, there's the whole the overarching thing like we just talked about. But then in a situational thing, me and Dark were uh, exploring this cave, and we found this big ass enemy, 
and there was another like one of the regular smaller enemies in the room too and uh dark was trying to sneak around so that he can like get to a, a decent spot in the room that he can attack the big guy without being so vulnerable and getting hit and i noticed that the big guy was on one side of the room completely unaware of dark soul invader and the little guy spotted him and he like kind of rushed him or whatever and then eventually the little dude ran away straight to the big guy and then they both came running back straight <laughs> charging him so thank like you. they'll Damn. go get their friends and attack you both in and the little situations and as the overarching yeah so that so was super many, scary man how many people can be in a game eight eight, eight. wow that's actually that's which is really that's nice. a decent amount yeah. yeah it's it's a good amount locally hosted cool. servers like you would for terraria or yeah. um um Ah, uh, fuck, Don't Starve, which this guy, game reminds me a lot of Don't Starve, only not cartoony at all. Yeah, it's got the <clears throat> similar difficulty as far as surviving, and then the enemies are pretty tough. Hmm. The base building makes me feel the a lot the same, yeah. where it's kind of freeform stuff. Mm -hmm. You can build the traps, you can build the you know, storage for supplies and stuff like that. Do they have... Um... Proximity voice chat because I could I could see that being they, really cool. They have walkie talkies. Walkie talkies. Yeah, you talk about oh, walkie talkies. Nice. Okay, that's really so fun. you could theoretically. We were in Discord, but you could theoretically just jump out of Discord and just you know press Q. It brings up the walkie talkie, and then yeah, sound like a walkie talkie when you're talking to them too. So. In actuality, I think that would be fun to play that way. Yeah, we should yeah. we should do we that. we should do that next time. Okay, how how much is like the forest? Local I'm looking this up. Only twenty. 20. Bucks. Yeah. And it's, it's been for a while. I, I it's know, been I've, on a lot of Steam sales for like five bucks. So I don't yeah. know if that's still going to be the case. Now that it's released, they might not discount it so heavily on sale. But at least for a while. Yeah, for a while. But you know, I wouldn't be surprised to see this thing ten bucks. Not too terribly long in the future. Or 15 yeah. at the least. All, all in all, I drop money on it, and I am happy. My only concern is this. Well, I shouldn't say concern. It's not a concern. But I could see this being a game where I put 20, 30 hours in, and then I'm just kind of done with it. But for 20 bucks, yeah. that's not bad. No, 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 okay, no. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. It's not bad. Yeah. It's just because it doesn't have that catchphrase word. Mm -hmm. I, mm. I mean, I guess I could get really creative in building a fortress. But that's about all there would be to it after yeah. after you beat and, it and get and everything. And you could really build a pretty cool fortress. Oh fuck you! I mean, you can, some pretty cool you can build stuff. custom walls, rotate them, stairs. Uh, you can create new foundations to build like different elevated oh. platforms, tree houses, zip lines, traps, decorative stuff. I might pick this. You can up. build a houseboat. There's a I fucking might. gazebo. What? Why would there ever be a gazebo in a survival? I attack situation? the gazebo because when I'm yeah. room, motherfucker, <laughs> all, I'm going to be comfortable. <laughs> <laughs> so next time we should we should just build a gazebo live there but right. yeah it's really really sweet game and i like I'm, the, I'm the, the cutting down trees mechanic is cool also yeah i really like that actually i was gonna say there's another really cool, i got 17 i hit the gazebo there's another really cool oh my god tom game <laughs> that came out didn't came come out that you can't download that's free what? that you shouldn't play but it's oh, awesome god. <laughs> oh, I yeah. never got yeah. hugely into Halo multiplayer aside from Halo PC oh, back God. in the day. So Halo 3 is not on PC. <clears throat> El Dorito du is Rito. on. El Dorito. Rito. Rito. No. El Dorito. It's like Dorito and Mountain Dew, so it's Dorito. It's du Rito. El Dorito. <sighs> It's, it's L. There's an L Halo. in front of it. It's El not Halo. Do Rito. Either way. El Dorito. Yeah. El Dorito. Don't, don't, oh, don't no. play it. Don't do it. We didn't play it either. But we we didn't play it play either. I actually but, didn't play it because I just didn't care. But it's, it, it plays fantastic. I've yeah, only heard good things. So, so, okay, here's some backstory on this. Um, Microsoft wanted to test the waters of releasing um, a... An all, basically a Halo Online, a Halo 3's well, multiplayer that's what on, it was called. on the PC. Yeah, it was called Halo Online. Mm -hmm. uh, and they only released this as sort of a, a network test almost uh, in mm -hmm. Russia. Um, it was Halo 3 through and through. Halo 3 code, the physics, the guns, the maps, everything. It was 
pure Halo 3, but for the PC. Uh, people found this code and they said, holy shit, this is abandoned. Microsoft decided not to make a product out of it. We are going to steal the fuck out of this and commit major copyright infringement crimes uh, and modify a bunch of the code, uh, You know, put some cool skins around this, make a server browser, make it easy for people to jump in and out of. Basically, a lot of quality of life improvements to bring this project back from the dead. Let people grab assets out of the Halo 5 Forge that's online and pull that into this as well so we can get yeah. some Halo 5 weapons. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> um, and what ended up happening is, as it turns out, when modders get a hold of something and they really want a project to succeed, they built the best version of Halo anyone has ever played on a PC. Ever. Yeah. It's it's really yeah. good. The only only complaint I have is the file browser because there is no matchmaking. There's a find a quick match, which works great unless you're trying to play with friends. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's a no party system. You have to find huh? the same Hold on, server. what'd you say? So, Me? Uh, I said there's no party system. Oh, I thought you said they just added party system. I was no. like, whoa, oh, no, no. okay. <laughs> Let's wrap this up right now. <laughs> so so this no, game this game really is uh it it is, you know, illegal. It is it is a form of piracy. It is infringing Microsoft's copyright six ways to Sunday, and it is currently the very best way to play Halo online. It's yes. been uh, oh my god, don't, I always get the acronym wrong. They got a cease and desist. They did. Um, yeah. And they pulled it down. They're cooperating with them, and Microsoft had to do it. They're, they absolutely had to do it. But mm. because it was out there and it was so big, Microsoft can't stop this, but they yeah. legally did what they needed to do. Yeah, so this will be this will be around. I'm sure you can find it on some unsavory corners of the internet. Uh, if you were so um, inclined, you shouldn't. I, I don't, don't know don't do if that. this is a thing, but there is act there. There's definitely not a sponsored Discord that definitely doesn't keep the most up to date place to find it. Where they definitely don't make sure it's moderator moderator con um, controlled to where unlikely people can't add stuff. They definitely don't have this out there. So. I, I really, AOL in semester says he got it on Kazaa. It would definitely be on Kazaa. Um, so, so also check Bear Share. Uh, Don't forget about Bear Share. It's on LimeWire, but only Lime the LimeWire Pro edition. It's not on normal. Yeah. Uh, it's Which okay. I, 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 I pirated Lime that Wire. off LimeWire. Oh, okay, cool. Um, <laughs> I okay. On the side, I love the people that I used to go to high school with. They would be like, "No, no, no! I paid for LimeWire, so everything I download on here is is legit." Like, no, no, mm, that's, that's, how this works. that's not how that's that works. That's not how any of this works. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, um, the what I could see coming out of this, I mean, other than the obvious cease and desist that already did come out, um, is I could see Microsoft standing back and going, "Hold on a minute." PCs have gamers? You mean we could release something more than just like <laughs> Minecraft and Solitaire on this? Holy shit! We should put Halo on a PC! To be fair, they planned on doing that with 6 anyway, and I think that's what the Halo 5 Forge release for PC was, was yeah. them figuring out mm. how do we get this current engine running well on PC. It, it's it's interesting. I would I would absolutely love to have the mainline Halo franchise. Now that Microsoft owns the whole thing, I would love to see it become not an Xbox exclusive, especially because yeah. uh, now that you've got um, that Gears of War. Yeah, what is the system called that does it? Because if if I buy oh, Play Anywhere, yeah. So now that oh, they've okay. got Play Anywhere, if I buy you know Halo Six and I don't have an Xbox One. I can still play it on my PC because I can play it anywhere. And Microsoft is still mm -hmm. getting the money. So who the fuck cares? In five years from now, if you get one second hand given to you, yeah. you can just download Halo 6 right onto it because Microsoft has yeah. a system now where, hey, you bought this on a platform, you own the game. Yeah. Play it wherever the fuck I, we allow you. I love yeah. that. I love that stuff. It's great. It's fantastic. And more companies should do it. Microsoft's starting to. It's still not widespread, but I think some of their main lines, like Forza 7, uh, Gears of War 4, and, you know, the fantastic release of Sea of Thieves. <laughs> yeah, fantastic. Somebody's feeling salty. <laughs> Somebody's fantastic. feeling salty. Oh, Somebody I know did. I know. Souls feels a little salty. I didn't actually play it, except for a bugged out beta that, what, three days before it released, I was getting spawned in the middle of a ship, so I knew it was about to be fucked there. <laughs> But no, um, if you can find it um, and make sure, vet it, make sure that you don't just grab it from some Joe Schmo. But if you find it, it is great. It is fun. Mm. Play it, enjoy it while you can. Because, well, 
but don't play it. But don't play it. Yeah, don't do that. Enjoy it, <laughs> but don't play it. Yeah. But an honest note, don't stream it. Um, Microsoft yeah. has been yeah. can't, uh, getting streams taken down. Twitch was taking down streams. Unless you're a big streamer, big then they won't take yeah. you down. No, they took down big streamers. They, didn't take, like, uh, they didn't take down. Uh, I knew his name. He was uh, huge. Uh, they took down th- someone with Bob. like 2,000 viewers. Oh, no. I'm talking guy on like Dr. Disrespect level big. Oh, you're talking about, uh, was it was it Soda? Or, I don't know. Either way, Twitch protected their own asses and didn't take out the big guy, but definitely took out the little guys. And I don't care that I'm employed by them. I will fucking call bullshit when I see it. That's bullshit, Twitch. Fucking bullshit. But anyway, <laughs> get it. Play it. It's fun. Irk and I do not summit. speak. Don't on- summit. Delaz has it right there. Sorry. Irk and I. Oh, Eric and I do not speak on behalf of our employers, and we are not authorized to. Everything yes. we say is our own personal opinion, and Irk said that, and I did not. Absolutely. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Bus Irk under. Got it. Yes. Bullshit. Okay. Anyway. Um, so if you are looking for an amazing RPG, that's still amazing me. The Witcher 3 is still great. Just letting everybody know. Also, I hit silver in Rocket League. Yeah, nice. yeah. Those are some awesome. Hollow Knight still amazing. Changes. You need a Metroidvania in your life. That's probably... Hollow Knight was so good. I'm waiting for the. That was the other Switch. game I was saying. Also, one more game. I got it. I got to throw out here. Got to throw out here. I don't know if Souls played, and yeah. Nebulize did. What the box? I couldn't play it. Oh yeah, I don't know what that is. Um, what the it's box right. is a world. You drop into a world. It's nothing but boxes everywhere oh, and all this shit. Oh, that. Game. And yeah, it's okay. a shooter where you're trying to kill yeah, yeah, yeah. other boxes. It's like hide and seek, right? It does have the best uh, hide and, soundtrack. It's hide, and, hide and seek first person shooter. Yeah, that's uh, okay. it's all right. It was fun for like an hour. Yeah. Um, I think the concept is better than the game. Yeah. Yeah. I think you could that, probably, I think you could make something else after that. Uh, Witch Hunt is a game that uh, Josh has been pretty big on. Um, and it's very similar concept where you have one person mm-hmm. trying to find everyone and everyone blends in as ordinary objects. Also kind of alludes to prey a little bit. Where yeah, it sounds the, also like the other game that's there was a, mod. There was a Gary's mod thing like yeah. that. Too. Oh yeah, yeah, Gary's mod. Something. I Crop should, Hunt. I Hunt. Ail, Ail Ail Messenger makes a good point. Too. It's the best box FPS he's ever played. There it yes. is. Hands it's down. On the box. Definitely it, it, the best box FPS out there on the market. And sound, and it's what all of five bucks. Yeah, yeah. I got a four pack for twenty bucks. I I got it so we yeah. could play it at Christmas, and uh, we're only a little we late. Christmas. And um, Tom still hasn't played it. Yeah, um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So so speaking of shit on the Switch, uh, the uh, the Switch uh, can be hacked now. You put Linux right. on your Switch. Yes, and oh, I saw that. they cannot fix it unfixable bug the only good thing about oh, i shouldn't say good um the person there was three groups that found it um two of them informed nvidia i think it is making mm-hmm. the chip and nintendo outright before anything was said yep um so as of right now we don't know but nintendo might be already making this with new chips possibly yeah. but the third company outwardly said fuck you and just outright exploited the day zero yeah so, so what, what this is is essentially um, a boot level exploit in the Tegra uh, chip. And it is, it is a hardware level flaw, like hardware firmware level flaw that you cannot patch once it's released from the factory for security reasons because they don't want you flashing custom firmware over your Tegra bootloader. So they locked it down and now they've locked it down with a bug in it. So I'm sure. Yeah. Yeah, I know. I'm, I'm sure. Homebrew. Yeah. Uh, new switches probably won't have this issue if Nintendo and Nvidia collaborate to get it fixed. I'm sure it will be, um, but yeah, not uh, not a fixable bug. Um, so this was the same sort of bug that the uh, the old Xbox had, right? The yep. way that people could uh, get games downloaded onto there. Uh, several systems or have, have modded that bug. Xboxes. Yeah, so the Xbox it was uh, CD player firmware where you would actually take out your CD drive or your DVD drive and flash custom firmware on it to allow it to read DVD-Rs. Mm. Yeah. And um, the Wii, 
I don't think the Wii's was an actual hardware flaw. No, it was a soft mod. Yeah, theirs was all mm. software because the Wii's operating system is actually like holier than fucking Swiss cheese. Um, <laughs> you could set uh, your name to a very specific string in Twilight Princess. Um, and then go to Kakariko Village and go up to somebody who would say your name. They'd say your name, which would jump you in memory to another location and send a uh, a message to the Wii's message board in the main menu. And it, it was red and it had a little bomb on it. It was actually kind of cute. And you clicked on it and it basically just blew up the Wii and all of its security protections to allow you to run custom code. It's pretty cool. And later it was advanced enough where you just put an SD card in and say go. Yeah. Um, though I will say, since we're on the modding aspect, I think the most fucked up mod I've ever seen came out of, uh, PSP, I think it was PSP, um, where you had to solder one of the pins of the battery across no, it was, to short it out. It, you cut it, use an actual box knife on the battery to, to break a connection in the battery. And this nice. is what allowed you to mod it, which yeah. I, I did that from Lance. Fucking and I'm like, this, terrifying. this felt so... So risky to do. You are cutting a battery, a lithium ion battery that can literally explode. Well, see, I wasn't yeah. worried about physical harm. I was thinking, I am cutting this. I could fuck your system. Yeah. You put this back in. Bye bye, PSP. Yeah. I didn't know Absolutely. that. That's an interesting. Why did that work? Or what? They, so Sony actually had um, essentially hardware level information routing. Uh, built into the silicon of the battery instead of on the system itself so you could cut into the battery's casing to break this connection uh, and that would break the thing that checked this other thing that made this other thing not work and then you could make it work that That's sounds the like they deserve it that's pretty crazy for that design so, decision <laughs> the psp is one of the most misdesigned piece of hardware i have ever seen glorious on the outside but absolutely dog shit on I was the inside say, I've, i i never owned a psp but i always the battery, thought they were cool the battery life lasted like six minutes because turns out that constantly spinning and changing the the rpms of a motor that drives a physical optical disc in your system <laughs> tears apart batteries pretty quickly yeah, but if you just install the mod and play every single Sega Genesis and Super Nintendo game on it. Yeah, that's totally fine. Tecmo Super Bowl, baby. Woo! Also, that, that beautiful screen <laughs> that they had, that gorgeous widescreen uh, that was yeah. super bright and playable. Uh, yeah, that also destroys battery life. That too. But it looks good. It does look good. Also, since we're in modding talks, uh, the FTC has came out and said that several video game developer companies that put stickers saying void if removed. Yeah, you can't do that anymore. That's yep. kind of illegal. Yep. So I actually, I just uh, got a new piece of hardware from a company uh, where uh, when, when picking this thing up, they said, oh yeah, and don't open up this panel uh, because the warranty is void if you do. And I said, ah, no, not, not, not now. I have no interest in, in modding this, but... Just to let you know, you can't tell that to people anymore because the FTC just ruled that you are allowed to open these things up. Um, it actually came about because uh, third-party repair shops for phones uh, would open up these people's phones to replace like cracked screens and stupid shit like that. And mm -hmm. somebody would send it back in for a warranty repair and they get it shoved back in their face saying, yeah, you, you can't do that. Somebody else opened it. Only we can open it. Uh, and that is illegal now. So... Hack away, mod away, take shit apart. Your warranty is fine. Well, I think there's still going to be limitations. You can open yeah. it up. But if you, like, replace your CPU, put in a new CPU, your warranty is Wait fucking void. Wait a minute. Probably. Maybe. We'll see. We'll I see don't how far remember we can push putting this, this here. I, I, what I see happening is people doing kind of like what Microsoft did with the Xbox 360. Yeah, they'll stick it protected. But yeah. on the inside... The heatsink was held on by what is called the X clamp. It was a one time use clamp that once removed, you could not get back on. And that will mm. be their way of being able to detect okay, you open the case, it's fine, but you actually tampered with the hardware. We are no longer responsible. At the, at the Xbox 360 was such a fucking no, jank no, system. No, I'm just saying in general. I can see them getting one-way attachments on things. They could. To yeah. pr that way they could be able to detect that, okay, you're allowed looking, but you can't tinker with this and then say it's our fault. 
Yeah, I don't know. We'll, we'll have to see. I, I really like this because it means that if something is stupidly broken, and I have had consoles that were stupidly broken, like, oh, if I was just allowed to remove this screw and plug this cable back in, this shit would work again. Like, fucking yeah. uh, the, the PS2, a cable would come loose, and then you'd get discrete errors unless you plugged it back in. But if you open it up, Sony's not going to help you. So yeah, yeah. we can uh, now fix that. That's what shit. that was. I had a PS2 that there did that. There are several and reasons yeah, for a disc And I ended error. up buying another PS2. Yeah, there there are several reasons for that error to pop up. Yeah, okay. it's but yes, yes, it's great that it's there, but there was reasons for it and I I didn't look enough into it to figure out how much they're going to hold hardware tampering though. Yeah. Be I, I because don't know. We'll essentially, see. yeah, I tried to mod my shit at bricked. I'm going to turn it in for a warranty. Yeah. Shouldn't work. Won't work. Won't work. Anyway, next is Steam Privacy Changes. GDPR. Tom, you're the only one who wants to talk about this. All right. So <laughs> the GDPR is a new European data protection law going into effect. And there's a lot of people and companies and et cetera that don't comply. And Steam said, yeah, sure. Why not? You can make your shit private if you want. You can delete your account if you want. Here you go. Here's your pages. The end. Huh. One of the companies that couldn't make it. Uh, was um, Uber. Yep. Uh, Uber Entertainment. Super Monday Night Combat's going away. If you like the game, so far there was only six concurrent people playing at a oh, given time. Oh, is it time. that high? Yeah, I oh, guess. Wow. When, I, when I was listening to Beastcast, they checked <laughs> and it jumped up to six people. Yeah, so, nice. so uh, no, fuck Uber, fuck Uber Entertainment for the shitty press release, because they went to all these gaming centers and said, oh, well, thanks to this data protection law, it would cost way too much for us to backport this game and to make sure we're complying. What kind of information are you collecting? You run Super Monday Night Combat. I, the point is, if they have to change one line of code, they're losing money no, I, because that game's not making I money. I totally get that, but all, like <laughs> this was just a, a press release of convenience. They should have said, hey, literally no one is playing this anymore and we're paying for servers. We're going to shut it off. I'd be like, all right, that makes sense. Okay. This is the company that fucked up everyone with Planetary Annihilation. I used to love them. I now hate them. Yeah, yeah, they, they mm -hmm. screwed the pooch there. Yeah, yeah, uh, Super Monday Night Combat was fucking rad, and it's dead. It's been dead for a while. Um, Don't blame yeah. our laws for your shitty game. Heh. Speaking of laws, Belgium is jumping out there <laughs> with those loot boxes, baby. Yep. They're putting down the ban hammer, saying it is illegal to sell loot boxes in Belgium. That is awesome. I'm really curious mm. to see how this works. Yeah, yeah, yeah this yeah. will be very interesting. If they I if they know. port this law into the EU, we could see some massive changes. Well, Belgium is doing Holland. I th not Holland. Um, uh, that was stupid to say. But there's another. I think Sweden, maybe. I don't know. There was another com country in that realm that is doing this as well. And then the UK is actually entertaining it right now. Hmm. But um, in their law, there was three games called out. By name. Yep. CSGO, Overwatch, and I just blanked. <laughs> but another one, either way. They, FIFA 18. FIFA 18, yes, because uh, the Ultimate Team stuff. Yep. Um, mm -hmm. So these are big fucking games. So what's going to happen in the short term, they're just going to pull it from the Belgian market. It's simple yeah. as that. Mm -hmm. But if EU adopts this, that's not a market they can drop out of. Yeah, we're, we're yeah. going to see if the EU decides to to essentially pull these laws in and make it an EU-wide regulation, we are going to see some massive changes uh, in in um, the way all this shit works. Uh, and beyond that, uh, we'll, we'll actually see massive amounts of free-to-play companies and uh, predominantly mobile developers start to exit the space and close their doors because they can't make money anymore. Or um, they actually just sell the items. Like yeah, that's I can, been proven to work. So I can buy a white octane for twenty dollars outright. Here's here's, okay. here's the issue, and and we actually we talked about this. Uh, I think on stream we we're playing something, but uh, we didn't talk about it during the cast. Um, there's an issue with that. Uh, so let's say you're, and I'm I'm gonna pick on psionics. They probably don't do this, but it might happen. I don't know. Um, so you're psionics and you've got, you know, a team of people creating content and it costs like 
six cents of a developer's time to come up with mantis critters and other shit that's just the the bottom trash tier of low tier and you can take a crate and fill it with 90 percent trash tier stuff and then put a lot of effort and a lot of time and money into making one awesome item that people actually want and they go through and they buy keys they unlock all the crates they get decryptors you know whatever nine times out of ten they're getting the shit that doesn't that they don't want that didn't cost you a lot of money to make um and if you put those in a store and nobody's gonna buy mantis critters everyone instead is going to buy the thing they actually want and in the end you're going to be getting less money because people aren't burning their money at the stake potentially because you're talking about one use case you're not talking about the people who refuse to buy keys that's because true. they don't yeah. want the risk they want an item that's true that's mm. literally me well, like, that's, we'll that's have exactly to me I, I would love it. I would love if I can go into Rocket League, if I can drop 20 bucks and get the, the perfect car that I want. Like, even if it's a shitty yeah. meme car, like, I would have spent 10 bucks on the So Money van so quickly because it's the <laughs> So Money van. I mean, on top of that, like, just the single cell item thing has been proven to work. Fortnite's making ridiculous money. They are. No crates. It's yeah. just, you know, you want this dance, you get that dance. You want that skin, you get that skin. You want this pickaxe, you get the pickaxe. Dota On top 2. of that, Titan, Titan Dota 2, 2 doesn't well. work that way. They do some. Mm -hmm. They do some. Do you get rid of Very you get few. rid of the you get rid of the treasure troves? Yeah, if you get rid of treasure, and it, that's all Dota has to do is just completely get rid of the treasures, then yes. Because that's the, way the compendiums. Yeah. Print money. They do. Rocket League says, hey, for every RLCS, we're going to have this book where we're going to do an online fantasy thing with it, and you're going to get items periodically if you do stuff through this event. Oh, yeah. They'd make, I, they'd make bank. I'm in. So. I don't even watch Pro Rocket League, and I'm in. <laughs> I just want something other than Mantis Critters. Yeah. Mantis. Also, that, like that means that you don't have to put as much time into small things, right? Because I think in, in Fortnite, it's not... How many things are in a crate? Like 15? It's like four rows of three. Yeah. So like 12-ish. Yeah. So in in uh, Fortnite, it's like, I believe it's technically eight items per week, sometimes more if they put in recolors, because they can put on like uh, one of the one of the weekends during the Winter Olympics, they put out a skiing skin, but it wasn't really just the one skin. Each each skiing skin had a different color associated it. So like if you wanted it to be uh, German, he had like a red and black and yellow backpack. American hmm. had like stars and everything on it. Um, so technically you have eight items to choose from week to week, uh, but some skins have variants. There's not, it's not like, how do I put it? I don't really know how to put it, but it's just like, you know, it's not making a bunch of filler items. They're putting out more things that people want to buy. They don't waste their time in shit people aren't going to buy. They spend more time with shit they know people will buy. I yeah, I would much. I would absolutely mm -hmm. love for no one to be hurt by the banning of loot boxes, but I think it's inevitable. Um, there there are yeah, absolutely yeah. companies and games that are See, solely sustained by whales. Yeah, I don't I don't know that I agree that it's gambling, but I would definitely like to see less loot boxes. I mean, by I think I think ultimately you're pay in a, in a loot box situation. You're guaranteed to get an item. You're paying X amount of dollars for an item. Well, but so it, look at it this it way, and it's it's technically not money, but I have gotten certain items in PUBG loot boxes and PUBG crates that I've then turned around and sold in the Steam marketplace, and mm -hmm. I've gotten you know real money out of it, mm -hmm. real money, yeah. right? And money I can use on Steam only, but it's still real-ish money and it's considered gambling in the fact that you're putting money in and you're rolling a wheel to see what you get out and yeah. a lot of them rocket league's bad at this rocket league's really bad at this they are doing the rule or the uh because the uh, slot machine wheel Shows they the wheel, are yeah. Yeah. they are doing yep. fucking casino video yeah. casino stuff csgo does that mm -hmm. as well has yep. that like spinny thing but you're guaranteed to get something at least kind of you're guaranteed the thing you're guaranteed to get something worth five that. cents yeah so, there, so there was Dota a thing where you could prove that that isn't anything there was like a paper written where you could they went through and they were saying you can get this thing that's worth one cent but is that really something so and dota, their conclusion was no dota did this uh interesting thing because they had to change uh their treasure 
uh, essentially their version of loot boxes. They had to change their loot box mechanics to even be able to sell the game in China markets. It's my favorite style of loot box. Yeah, it's uh, because you have a maximum amount of payout, right? So in Rocket League, you can buy, you know, a pack of keys and you can unlock... You know, as many crates as you want, and you're never guaranteed to get the item you want. Uh, in mm -hmm. in Dota 2 style loot boxes, you will never get a repeat until you unlock one of everything. Even Ex if that thing is super, super rare, the last one you unlock will give you a full set. Well, there's the ones that are never guaranteed. They do have, because you, you have the whole lineup. The yeah. lineup's guaranteed. Then at the very bottom, you have... Um, I can't remember what they called them, but there was like these things that weren't characters typically. Uh, I'd have to look at it, but I remember okay. there being two that were not guaranteed hits. I don't remember that. That everything else in the crate was a guaranteed hit. Unless it's like a different color or different rarity type. It would be like you would have this flame courier, but it would be like an earth courier that was rare that you may oh, not be able okay. to get. Okay. I see. Oh, okay. Yeah, so it's it's not great. But that's typically, yeah, I mean, it still has the okay, same Okay, is saying that's not true. They were rare and very rare. Yep. Goldskins or super special or current. Yeah, that, that's, what I, that's what I was saying. Then it's, never mind. Fuck Valve. They're doing it the wrong way. But it's still <laughs> better because... It's still better, but marginally better. so. But, yeah. I want to I wanna buy X number if there are X number in, in the crate and get one of each. No. I want to click buy the okay, fucking okay. item That's I what want. I really want. That's what I really want. I want, I want to go and yeah. buy the diva skin that I want in Overwatch. I, I want to... Oh my to, god, yes. Yeah, I just... I want to I wanna customize my dudes. I want my... my uh, you know, what's her name to look like David Bowie. That's really what I want. I want the Ziggy Stardust skin in overwatch but i think that's kind of why i liked mmos is because you could go through and grind for materials that eventually led to you crafting what you want to look like mm -hmm. that's kind of why i like those yeah monster hunter yay yeah exactly oh my god six more months what do you mean i've been playing it for three anyway yeah but you're um, playing it on a plus. so, so vw is saying i've sold three things in dota for over 100 bucks which would not be possible if everyone got them i get it but that's that's a yeah, side does, cause. It you, does completely get rid of an economy. <laughs> it does. And you know what? I'm, I'm okay with that. Yeah, I would rather get rid of the economy and actually get what I or, want. Or do the mm. stupid baseball card thing where if it's if it's, you know, in the plastic or in, you know, in the, the wrapping paper, you can say, you know, I bought this from the store and it's now unwrapped. Right. Or, or as soon as I trade it, it's now unwrapped. It's now, you know, one rarity tier lower. It's right? been if, used. Yeah, see, so you can you can buy the used diva um, skin that is bit for bit identical, except for a flag that says, "Yep, this one's used." Oh, you don't have the new diva skin? Well, see, I'm not even talking to you. Nah, I just that think that pointless. the whole <laughs> blind box. Yeah, thing, I don't know if that would work. But... I still say blind boxes are bullshit. They need to go away. Just do item sales. Anyway, I'm, I'm I, it's no different that. than baseball cards, really. Yeah, but I think that's playing. Those are. I, I always thought like and baseball. You could Pokemon argue that that gambling. was. You can argue that that's bullshit too. But just. Yeah. You know. I think roulette is gambling. Can we talk about that? No. No. <laughs> but you know it's not. They over twenty one though. Having yeah. a forty something yeah. year old be the president of one of the biggest think, gaming companies in the world. That's not a gamble. Yeah. I'll because tell you what he's is, established. I'll tell you what is a gamble. He aims to build a billion dollar mobile gaming business. Nintendo. They just discovered the internet existed like two years ago. Yes, but they're getting a new president who wants to go mobile. Maybe that means that their mobile app will have more support Maybe. than just Splatoon the only after thing a I year. Want, the only thing I want to have Nintendo right now is for them to, to fucking like pay gobs of money to like low-level Xbox Live employees to sit in a boardroom and go, no, 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 you need usernames. Wait, we need what? Like, no, our users have names, like a first name and a last name, the parents general get... No, 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 guys. No, 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 no. Guys, like, it's like an email account, but it's a name that you make on the Nintendo system. Oh, so you mean 76518379? No, no. The, like, the user makes it. Not like you give it to them. You're oh. not their parents. But that's how people find each other, 76238319. No, but, like, a, they would type in a name, and then you would search for that name. It makes them easy to find because they know, oh, Bob's name is like Radical Fisherman 69. But we have that. <laughs> and that's Nintendo. Yep. <laughs> I just I just want them to fucking carbon copy Xbox Live. I really want cloud saves. I'm super excited about the Switch getting hacked because it might mean I can back up my save games. Hmm. If your Switch dies, all your saves go with it. 
That yes. sucks. Everything. All of your games go with it. Literally everything. That's crazy. Yeah, it's not account based. Nothing is account based in Nintendo's world. It's all system based. It's fucking bullshit. Wait, so, if I buy a Switch and buy The Binding of Isaac and Hollow Knight when it comes out and Skyrim for the 40th time, and then that Switch gets run over by a truck and I buy a new Switch, I have to buy those games again? Unless you've got physical cartridges, yes you do, unless you cut a ticket to Nintendo support and try to work with them to get uh, things moved over and finagled. Wow. You could, prob sounds you could probably get the games. You won't get your saves. No, the saves, the are, saves are gone. gone. Totally gone. Oh, okay. Okay, yeah. you get the games, but not the saves. Yeah, there's been people. You will have to. You can't just. It's not like. Uh, it's not like Xbox or or Steam, right? You can't log into your Switch and pull your past purchases. That's so. That's so crazy. You you have to talk to Nintendo support to get your games back. Yeah, there's been people that would get a new Switch. You go to that Switch. You v don't. You can't VW, get your games. VW is saying account based VW. purchases. I don't think that's they're, correct. They're, they're account based. That's absolutely on. right. But you can't. They're also locked to console. You have to actually uh, get see. a support ticket with Nintendo to transfer it to a new console. I see. Mm. There, there was horror stories about people having to do that, especially with saves. They've actually. I can't remember if they had to send it in. Or there was a packet that I sent, and they essentially they have a cloud on the back end. That's what's happening, Ugh. but they don't expose it to the user, and that's how they can transfer your saves if you still have your console. God, this is so fucking mm. shitty. If my mm. if I lose my Switch, if it gets stolen, if it just dies for whatever reason, that's it. This the hundred hours I put into Breath of the Wild is just gone. It's it's unconscionable. You know another way to make it be gone? Uh, put okay. put it on a third party dock. God. In fact, someone did that, bricked it, and now opened a class action lawsuit against the maker of the dock. Yep. As as is custom. So, so yeah, thanks to the Switch not being USB-C compliant, shit tons of third-party accessories are bricking these consoles, saves, games, and all. Um, and uh, yeah, uh, actually, um, a couple people at work were saying, "Oh yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna buy a Switch. It's this stock good." I was like, "No, stop, stop, wait, stop!" <laughs> like they're they're on they're on Amazon's homepage, and I'm like running at them at their desk, screaming, "No, stop! Don't hit the button, stop!" And I, I lean over it. and I look, and it's just like, "Oh, okay, Nintendo branded." Yeah, it comes from Nintendo of America, sold and shipped by Nintendo. Okay, okay, never mind. You can go. You can proceed. They're like, go ahead. All right, proceed. Uh, what, what's the issue? You did that with Josh and I after I had just told him, <laughs> make sure it's Nintendo. He's yeah. like, okay, He's yeah, like, I'm just going to get stop, Nintendo. Josh, stop, Josh. Don't, don't do it. Don't do it. I don't promise do don't it. do it. You have so much to live for. And and he's like, <laughs> like I clicked on the link finally. Like, it's like Nintendo Dock. And, so like, oh, and I'm like, okay. Tom, we just talked Relax. about this. Yeah. Tom. Tom, please just relax. I, I just, I really want, because I understand the need. I had to, every time I travel for lengthy periods of time with my Switch, and I know I'm going to have a TV, I take the dock with me. I pack the dock in my suitcase. Hmm. Yeah. I want a small travel dock. That's all I want. And Nintendo doesn't give that to me. It would be nice to have one, but, eh. but you know what is going to be made small? A fucking Sega Genesis. They're making yeah, a yeah. mini because the Genesis has been remade like 10 times like the little NES one. But this one, I think, is actually being done by Sega. Yeah, the other previous ones were actually trashed. Oh, yeah. They were just garbage. Awful. But they were there. Yeah, so Sega's going to prove once and for all that size doesn't matter. And make their own. Yeah. So, yep. Did you? Mm. And Genesis Classic. What was that, Adam? Did you guys have a Nomad? I wanted a Nomad. I wanted a Nomad so bad. You're the friend, only person I know that had one. My loved, friend growing up had a I Nomad. I the Nomad. He had a it TV so tuner. Good. Oh my god, it was such and a cool little thing. It was, it so, was backlit. It, it played was, the regular console games. It you know was what, awesome. You know what For the Nomad all those is? young kids, Adam, how about you explain what the Nomad was? It was <laughs> a the Nomad Switch. was a portable Sega Genesis. It was not a different console. It was a portable Sega Genesis. It was the Nintendo Switch before the Nintendo Switch. Well, only it ran on what four AA batteries that would expire. Was it only four? Or was quick? it six? Like the Game Gear? It had a really bright backlit screen, and it was playing full Sega Genesis games. And it was about the size of hmm, it's like a big ass brick. <laughs> yeah, it was relatively. I, mean, I don't know how else to describe it. It was a big brick. It was a brick. 
but it was cool because you could yeah it just played the regular console games it wasn't a different set of mobile games it was just ah yeah sonic so and knuckles cool. sonic 2 but yeah so fucking cool. and then they realized like yeah die in lion king again but also if you don't want to buy the mini, mini genesis some of those games are actually coming to the switch yeah. So you will be able to play classic cool. Sega games on the Switch before you are able to play classic Nintendo games I on the Switch. I don't know what Nintendo's doing. Just please figure out how the world works. <laughs> I would buy Mario 64 again. I've done it like 27 times. I will do it again, Nintendo. Just give me what I want. Allow me to give you money. Um, but hey, if you want to play Chrono Trigger on the PC, uh, you can now, and you can download it through Steam, and it's not a pile of shit. Uh, you have the option to turn on original graphics mode, and the game looks much, much better. Uh, Square actually went through and fixed all the complaints people had about the PC port. So Cool. Yeah. Good Chrono Trigger's him. amazing. You should play it. Okay, there's another headline here that I'll say, and then Tom fill in the blanks. Gwent revamped the way. On the but, way. Yeah. Uh, they're they're going to redo a lot of things in Gwent. Cool. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> That's why it was a headline. There's <laughs> literally no information. They just said, hey, we're going to rebuild this. Um, newsflash. The new COD Black Ops. Black Ops 4. That's right. Fourth. Um, they may have Battle Royale. Is anyone shocked? Anyone? Mm, no. Wait a minute. Battle new Royale. Battle, new what? Battlefield game was probably going to have it too. Um, I feel that COD would be weird with that. but Yeah, yeah it would. Yeah. Uh, Doom Whatever. soundtrack is getting a physical release. Yeah. Is this getting nice. a vinyl too? Yeah. Fuck yes. It's, it's, it's good enough. Little, it's a little pricey, but yeah, I'm I'm excited. I'm not gonna buy it, but I'm excited. <laughs> that be honestly the Doom soundtrack on vinyl would be cool as like a to hang up on the wall or something. Yes. Yep. Decoration. But that's, I'm not. I'm not. I don't have a record player or anything. But that's what I, I would wouldn't do. do that. But. To me, if I want my Doom to actually play, I hook it up to big speakers, I blast the fuck out of it, and then I just back away and headbang. Yeah. Yeah. Love it. Um, Valve has purchased Camp Santo, the creators of Firewatch. Maybe now they will have story writers to actually create some threes. No, they won't. Okay. Yeah. Um, also... Oh, Destiny 2, 12 bundle, $12 Humble Bundle. Yay. Yeah. We talked about it. Yeah. However you feel, do it. Don't do it. Be you. Uh, Wolfenstein mm -hmm. coming next month to the Switch. That is Wolfenstein 2. The, the new, new Colossus. Colossus. Not like the old Wolfenstein 2 Spear of Destiny. Um, so Fortnite news. Fortnite guys cover this. Um, the, the comet. It came. It went. Towers yeah, it, are standing. It hit. It was, it was kind of cool. I like that they're changing up the world. It's kind of kind of nifty. You've been playing like much of that of, recently. I like Souls? the idea of a game that has one map like that that's constantly evolving with events and stuff. That's cool. Yes. Mm. Yeah. It's pretty cool. Did you check out the new site at All Souls on that? The new Oh yeah, yeah. Uh we played with uh, Josh and Bird and RS I think we landed so, there. Oh no, Tom, it was Tom. Yeah. So everybody yeah, thought there. that it was everybody thought that this thing was going to blow up Tilted Towers and it ended up blowing up Dusty Depot. It? Yeah, okay. the conspiracy it, it, theorists thought it was going to blow up Tilted. Mm, yeah. The real yeah, people knew it was going to hit Dusty, because apparently that was part of the story mode. Like, if you played Save the World, it's like, yeah, this is going to hit here. But people came out with, like, crazy theories yeah. that a glitch The frogs was... are turning our kids gay! Not the fucking Morse code? <laughs> yeah, that one. They're like, the, there's, <laughs> there's Morse code, and Epic was like, that's a glitch. Epic that's was... Nothing, literally nothing. <laughs> No, but it wasn't a glitch. It was legit Morse code. And it was the it same wasn't. every single time. It wasn't. It turned out not to be. People who actually knew Morse code went through it and they're like, yeah, that's not, it's nothing. It doesn't no. have any sort of repeating or anything. Well, never. The, all those, all those videos. Yeah. Unfortunately, all those videos Shit. and stuff, they're like, this is Morse <laughs> code. It was like just total view debate, view bait. And then the people who are actually like, yeah, no, that's not, that's nothing. There's, it really was just a glitch. That's gone now. That was fixed even before the meteor hit, I'm pretty sure. So, I... Uh, Epic was actually trolling everyone. There were, like, <laughs> p 
picket signs and stuff saying, you know, we're ready <laughs> or we are not alone or the end is near on top yeah. of the buildings and tilted towers, like <laughs> completely abandoned, like couches, TVs, trash everywhere. Like people were like, oh, it's going to hit tomorrow. It's going to hit tomorrow. And then it didn't. And Epic's, then they started complaining and Epic's like, ha, ha, look at all these people. They were camping out all night and nothing happened. <laughs> nothing happened. <laughs> That's awesome. Trolling the shit out of their fan base. Uh, it's just like, like when, there were technical yeah. reasons they couldn't do it though, because there was uh, some some challenges had to do with tilted towers. If they had destroyed tilted, people couldn't have finished their their battle passes theoretically. Oh. That's fine. Do oh. it. Do it. Yeah, that'd piss off. Do people. it. Yeah, um, they should just give them those achievements if they do something like that. Yeah, I guess they could do that, but then they'd probably be losing money off of betting on people not finishing their battle pass. Yeah. True. Um, Ashland University is now offering an esports program. Um, I have no fucking clue who Ashland University is. Though. They're in Ohio. Nobody knows. Nobody cares. <laughs> um, it's kind of cool. I live in Ohio. Hear, I but, didn't even know about yeah. it. <laughs> uh, CD Project Red has an RPG come in 2018. So this was cyber. It's not confirmed, but widely rumored to be the first time we're going to look at something not a uh, that's not that pre-rendered trailer of Cyberpunk 2077. It's supposed mm. to be a more ambitious project than The Witcher 3. Uh, the studios had people like quit in protest of the amount of work. Um, <laughs> so this will debut beside Crackdown 3 as in never? I, I don't know. Like, I'm, you never know. I will probably buy this game when it comes out. Um, it's Cyberpunk, it's an RPG, and it's made by people who actually care about their player base. Yeah, I'm probably mm. going to throw some, some dollars their way. Uh, it's so going to be I'm, a first-person shooter, right? I believe it was a first-person, third-person shooter. Yeah, I don't know. I'm super Kind of like a Deus Ex type excited. of thing. That would be really cool. Deus Ex, those games are good. I Deus love those Ex games. with the writers of The Witcher? Holy That'd shit. That would be really cool. Sign <laughs> me really, the really fuck cool. up. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, I don't know how to even segue to this. This is just, I, my jaw dropped. Speaking drop. of Adam's Nomad. I, my jaw <laughs> dropped when I heard yeah. this news, and I said this to you guys. I'm like, dude. You're not going to believe this. A Game Gear game was bought last month. Now, keep Why in is mind, that a big deal? We're not talking yeah. secondhand from a thrift store. We are talking officially from a licensed vendor. A brand new Game Gear game was sold last month. <laughs> like, like a collector <laughs> went to a shop and found one in shrink wrap? No, like you. someone went to Toys R Us and bought a... Well, Toys R Us is fill in the blank. We, we're assuming that's what it is. Went to Toys R Us and bought a brand new old Game Gear game. You think they still have DuckTales on the NES back there? Woo! But no, um, everyone was confused as to how the fuck this happened. So um, it's assumed at this point that the huge liquidation of Toys R Us resulted in lost inventory being sold. And one of the lost inventory items potentially being a Game Gear game. This is fucking nuts. So now we can it was, say... It was Sonic the Hedgehog 2, so they had good taste. Yeah. But this is... Game Gear Sonic 2 was not the same yes. as oh, Genesis I never Sonic did 2. Play. Okay, I didn't play any Game Gear games The ever. Game Gear Sonic games are very different because the screen was different, and the, the Game uh, Gear yeah. literally could not run Sonic the Hedgehog on the Genesis. Uh, it was simply not powerful enough. But it's I was just, too busy with my powerful, wonderful, bulky Nomad. Yep, it's just really In cool to think. Though. Twenty pack of AA batteries. So, so the Two Game Gear decades. is officially the longest living portable game system, as far as retail sales are concerned. Even though That's it went great. two decades without a sale. Yeah, but but it's the longest lived. We yeah. now have another sale. Fucking nuts. Um, speaking of nuts, Stardew Valley finally has the beta of the multiplayer. Woo! So That's, it's good. I haven't played it yet. I need to go to the beta mode. Um, I'm pumped. I want to do this. I need to do this. It's available now. Switch your Steam build to beta and explore, have fun, how and play I, with people. How do I do that on my Switch? Oh, you um, have to enter a code actually. What you oh, to get really? to the beta? What you yeah. can? Yes. What? I can do this on my Switch. Hold on, hold on. That's actually possible on the Switch. <laughs> Holy no, no, no. shit! I, mean, I meant on Steam. On Steam, you need to oh. know the code to get into the beta. You see, I was, was going to be a smart ass. Damn it! I was going to tell Tom what he needs to do is take his Switch, open his DVD drive, and jam it in there, and there you go. Your computer has a DVD drive? Yeah. 
Wow. I like to have that as a physical media in case I need it to do stuff to my computer. Tech shit. Anyway, like boot boot stuff. Um, boot from USB. Yeah, I was just mentioning I, that because I wear boots sometimes. Sometimes. <laughs> um, then final, final bit of news, everyone. Final bit of news for the week, month. News. Mega Man 2 and Mega Man Max are being re-released on cartridge. Look at these. So Look at these cartridges. There's like a translucent royal blue and then a glow-in-the-dark baby oh. blue NES cartridge of Mega Man 2. They're pretty. That's pretty cool. I, yeah. I do like re-releases like this. I do. Yeah. Uh, now, I'm I'm not going to pay for it because they are collector's items. They are expensive. I, I'm, I'm not going to buy them. But yeah. that's, but that's cool. really cool. If you look to your right, you can see I'm a sucker to have some things on bookshelves from time to time. Like this, These would be good because Mega Man 2 is easily one of the best, if not There's, the best, Mega Man game on the NES. The I thing, would put 3 slightly above 2. Yes, but you subtract 2. And that's how many of them I've played. So I'm not a Mega Man guy. I played X5 or X6 or X4, one of those, or all three of them. I can't remember. Okay. It's been a while. You do I'm, any? I'm a Mega Man game. I, or a Mega Man I game. liked I've them a lot. Everything. Time. You do any Mega Man I Souls? Oh, yeah. I loved Mega Man. X series was great. Dude, and then the Game Boy soundtrack. versions were good. You cannot beat that soundtrack. Sure, you can. Doom. You can. Doom. I would take Mega Man. I, over I, I even put. I don't love the Mega Man soundtracks. To be honest, really? I don't and know why. You're you're not a chiptune guy though. Yeah, to, not not really. To me, the way that Doom fit the atmosphere of that game, that soundtrack, that that was just. It's a good. It's point. something you can't do with the old games as easily. Yeah, no, you definitely mm -hmm. can't. But I don't know. The soundtrack of Save Your Damsel was pretty on point. <laughs> Just throwing that out there. It was fantastic. But anyway, I think I think that's all we got for you guys this week. Um, so a little quick Smart. rundown for y'all. You know, we are slowly getting up some of our old podcasts. We will be up to date at some point. At some point, no. we at will some be point, up eventually. To date. No. Um, so when that happens, you can go over to our YouTube and check out all the stuff. Um you can also go to our Twitter and just tell us shit that you want us to talk about through the month. It's been a month. It's going to be a month. There's going to be stuff we miss. If you tweet at us, we'll actually find some stuff that we might have missed otherwise. We'll ignore you. Tom will ignore you because Tom's an asshole. Tweet at us. You can also just say, like, hi. Yeah, say hi. And mind. also a place you can say hi is if you scroll down. Uh, we have some links to our Discord. You just jump mm -hmm. in there. There's some pretty rad dudes. Um, yeah, we all live there. Um... Other things, Dark Soul Invader, he streams a lot. Yeah, He's, a lot. Yeah. Everyone should go check out his stream. Go give him some love. Go subscribe. He helps us. Twitch.tv forward slash Dark Soul Invader. Everyone needs to help him. Do it. Um, and in in some freakish thing, you're actually on our YouTube watching this right now. Jump over to Twitch the first Saturday of every month, 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Eh, these will go a little longer, so probably chill with us for a couple hours and have a good time with us. Um, but just saying, jump into the discord right now, go up into the lounge and we'll probably be playing something after this cast, nothing official, but let's get a group of us together. Let's have some fun. So yeah, that said till next week, game on. See everyone. See everyone. Bye-bye.